Hold, and stand down. If you want to get into Riften, use the north gate. This one's closed. My orders are to tell the riffraff to use the north gate. That's it. No. You can use the north gate, or you can head to the next city. Hold there. Before I let you into Riften, you need to pay the visitor's tax. For the privilege of entering the city. What does it matter? All right, keep your voice down. If you want everyone to hear you, I'll let you in. Just let me unlock the gate. The gate's unlocked. You can head inside when you're ready. Heard they're reforming the Dawn Guard. Vampire hunters or something in the old fort near Riften. Never done an honest day's work in your life for all that coin you carry, hey lad? Never done an honest day's work in your life for all that coin you carry, hey lad? Ah, oh, expecting free information, eh? Help me deal with business first, then we'll see how I can help you. Besides, you look like your pockets are a little light on coin. Am I right? Passing on a golden opportunity is worse. I've got a bit of an errand to perform, but I need an extra pair of hands. And in my line of work, extra hands are well paid. Simple. I'm going to cause a distraction. You're gonna steal Medesi's silver ring from a strongbox under his stand. Once you have it, I want you to place it in Branche's pocket without him noticing. There's someone that wants to see him put out of business permanently. That's all you need to know. I'll be out in the market all day, from 8 in the morning until 8 in the evening. Meet me then, if you've still got the stomach for it. We've been contracted to make sure Branche remembers not to meddle in affairs that aren't his own. Now, since we're not the Dark Brotherhood, we're not going to kill him. We're just going to make sure he sits in the prisons for a few days. Do you want me to hold your hand as well? You're going to have to sneak over to Medesi's stall and use your lockpick on the strongbox. Then, when you have the ring, you pickpocket Branche and leave it behind. I'll be at the market come morning. You better be there too. What wasn't I? Okay, lad. Ready to make some coin. Yes, yes, I haven't got all day. Can I interest you in some fine goods from Morrowind? Take a look. Keep your eyes to the road. If anything pleases the eye, don't hesitate to make me an offer. See for yourself. Good journey, Marsh friend. The fairest prices and the highest quality in Skyrim. Okay, lad. Good. Wait until I start the distraction, then show me what you're made of. Everyone, everyone, gather round. I have something amazing to show you that demands your attention. You need to hear this. Patience, Branche. Fresh this is a rare opportunity. Wouldn't want you to get left out. 
Lead on. And need me to carry something? Let's tread softly. And it turned out to be crushed nerve root mixed with water. Well, that was a simple misunderstanding. But this item is the real thing. Lads and lasses, I give you Falma Blood Elixir. Guaranteed. Oh, come on. Are you talking about the Snow Elves? The one and only. Mystical beings who live in legends and were masters of great magic. Imagine the power that coursed through their veins. How did you get that then? No one's seen them in years. My get sources must remain a secret for their own protection, but I can promise you that the contents are genuine. One sip of the elixir and your wishes will be granted. Great wealth, everlasting life, or perhaps limitless power could be yours. How much does it cost? Vegetables as Only as 20 a gold morning. septums. Hurry, before my supply is gone. Can't you bother the armor stand in the market? Or are you that desperate for training? I could get rich and stop selling these trinkets. 20 coins? No one has that much. Wield powerful magic incantations. I don't know. Sounds like I should try. Hmm? Lost it. Well, at least you showed signs of initiative by telling me. I guess I shouldn't be surprised with the way things are going around here. Until next we meet, lad. I guess I expected too much from you. I didn't think you'd get pinched. Can't say I'm surprised with the way things have been going around here. Nah. My organization's been having a run of bad luck. But I suppose that's just how it goes. But never mind that. Even though you fouled up the job, I still think you've got the spark I'm looking for. There's plenty of gold out there for the taking, if you're up to the challenge. Look, I'll make this simple for you. The group I represent has its home in the Ratway beneath Ripton, a tavern called the Ragged Flagon. When you make up your mind, come find me there, and we'll talk about your future. You never seem to be so upset about anything. The city really gets to hurt. skin us alive if they knew we were doing this. Why are you always acting like such a big baby? I've gotten us this far. This far? We're living in a sewer. You said we'd have a house as big as the Blackbriars by now. You worry about bashing people's heads in. I'll worry about the guild, okay? Okay, okay. I'm going to check the entrance to the Ratway. Be right back. Hey you, stop right there. Empty your pockets or end up as skiva food. Brynjolf's been sending idiots like you down here for years looking for their hideout. Funny thing is his stupid thieves guild never counted on me and my partner blocking the way. Now empty your pockets or I'll pick the gold off your corpse. No need to get hasty. I... I was just testing you. You can go on ahead. Let him go, Hunan. All clear. Don't even think about it. What are you looking at?
Don't worry. Hunan will let you pass. What are you looking at? Days are over. I'm telling you, this one is different. We've all heard that one before, Brynn. 
Quit kidding yourself. It's time to face the truth, old friend. You, Vex, Mercer, you're all part of a dying breed. Things are changing. Dying breed, eh? Well, what do you call that, then? Well, well. Color me impressed, lad. I wasn't certain I'd ever see you again. Reliable and headstrong? You're turning out to be quite the prize. So, now that I've whetted your appetite with our little scheme at the market, how about handling a few deadbeats for me? They owe our organization some serious coin, and they've decided not to pay. I want you to explain to them the error of their ways. Kirava, Percy Honeyhand, and Helga. Do this right, and I can promise you a permanent place in our organization. Honestly, the debt is secondary here. What's more important is that you get the message across that we aren't to be ignored. A word of warning, though. I don't want any of them killed. Bad for business. Of course you'll get a cut. We take care of our own. Now, if you need any details on your marks, I'll be here. Get going. Yeah, I bet I know your guy. He's hiding out in the Ratway Warrens, paying us good coin for nobody to know about it. I'll be here when you're done.
is it? Dragons? Hey, don't look at me that way. Who are you to judge me? Ours is to smile at your passing, friend. Looking for work? I need someone to deliver a message to Sibby Blackbriar. If you're looking for a room, try the Bee and Barb. This place is for the working man. What did you want? Of course not. You expect me to take care of it by myself? My niece Svana helps me with the chores. She'd be more help if she kept her head out of the clouds. She's been with me ever since her parents were killed by bandits and she was dropped in my lap. What does he want now? I already explained to him that you can't get blood from a stone. Look, I can't make the coin appear out of thin air. Please, be reasonable. I'll... I'll pay next month. And so have I. What's the point of paying anyway? Your outfit can't even fend for itself. I could do better tossing the gold into the sewer. You can't scare me with your tough talk. I'm not paying you people a single coin. Please, don't take the statue. It's the only thing of value I have left. Not Lady Debella. No, please, I can't lose her. I get the message. Here, take your gold. I hope you choke on it. Catchy, isn't it? In my youth, I was a fisherman. I had a beautiful ship named the Brawny Prawn. But the years have a way of creeping up on me. I ended up selling that ship to open this place. Seemed only fitting to name it after her. Well, changed it a bit, I suppose. If I had been smarter, I would have kept my boat. Coming to this city was a big mistake. <laughs> the question is, what isn't wrong with Riften? This city is corrupt, rotten to the core. No one cares about anything except themselves, and how much coin they can make off the misery of others. Authorities, have you been listening to what I said? They're all dirty. Every one of them. The only way to get things done in this city is to keep your head down and pay off the right people. They used to be pretty feared around here. I mean, you'd whisper the name and it'd send chills down your spine. Now, they're nothing more than ruffians and thugs trying to pry a few extra coin from honest people. All it would take is a small force of guard to go into the Rathway and flush them out. It's our name for the old sewers that run under the city. It used to be a huge system hundreds of years ago, but it fell into decay, just like the rest of Riften. The guild stalks the place full of thugs that aren't good enough to join, so watch yourself if you venture down there. What? Oh, it's one of you people. 
So Brynjolf doesn't even bother to show up himself anymore, eh? What's this message? Petty threats and fist-waving are not going to sway me. You people are all talk. And everyone knows it. You demand payment for protection. And you can't even protect yourselves! Don't fool yourself. It's only a matter of time before you people are run out of Riften. Likewise. Now I have a lot to do, so I'm afraid you'll just have to leave. Get it. I'll pay on time from now on. Just don't smash anything else. Here, take your gold. And leave me in peace. I hope you're here for friendlier reasons now. After all, I'm all paid up. I hope you're here for friendly. The city got attacked once by those damn bandits from east across the lake from the west. Yeah, what's your problem? Until next time. for a room or something to drink? Show me some coin first. Look, everything was all just a misunderstanding. I didn't mean to tell Brynjolf to go jump off the pier. You tell him I'm sorry, yes? Take this. Every single coin I owe is there. I swear it. Yeah, what's your problem? I knew that stupid kid would try and find a way to weasel out of his debt. Look, this is really simple. I lent him some gold, he promised to pay me back, and now he says he's broke. End of story. All right, all right. I guess I made enough from his shipment. No need to waste any more time threatening a stable hand. Tell Shadra he doesn't owe me anything. I hope we bump into each other again. Sapphire. Five. Eight? You actually talked her into it? I don't know what to say. I didn't think anyone in Riften even cared what happened to me. Look, I was saving this, but I wanted you to have it. I thought I might need it if Sapphire came for me, but I don't need it anymore. I'd better get going.
stay out of trouble, or there's gonna be trouble. Good news. I found that dwarven hammer you were looking for. You did? Thanks. I'll get you the rest of your coin by tomorrow. Yeah, funny about that. The price was a hundred higher than I expected. Delvin, you have no shame. I'll get you the rest like I said. I want that hammer. So, job's done and you even brought the gold. Best of all, you did it clean. I like that. Dumping bodies and keeping the guards quiet can be expensive. Well done. And it would seem I owe you something in return. Here you go. I think you'll find these quite useful. Judging from how well you've handled those shopkeepers, I'd say you've done more than simply prove yourself. We need people like you in our outfit. That's the spirit. Larceny's in your blood. The telltale sign of a practice thief. I think you'll do more than just fit in around here. What's on your mind? We've run into a rough patch lately. But it's nothing to be concerned about. Tell you what, you keep making us coin, and I'll worry about everything else. Fair enough? Now if there are no more questions, how about following me and I'll show you what we're all about. Even if you're one of us, you better not make trouble. I think you better listen to Mercer and Brynjol first. We can talk later. They call me Sapphire because I love to steal them. Don't get me wrong, I'll steal any gem that isn't nailed down. But there's something about those blue stones that gets my blood boiling. Mercer, this is the one I was talking about. Our new recruit. This better not be another waste of the guild's resources, Brynjolf. Before we continue, I want to make one thing perfectly clear. If you play by the rules, you walk away rich. You break the rules and you lose your share. No debates, no discussions. We do what we say, when we say. Do I make myself clear? I'll let that comment go because you're new here. Ask things out of turn again and we have a problem. Now, are we clear on all of this? If you're not sure, maybe you don't belong here. I'll ask again. Are we clear on all of this? Good, then I think it's time we put your expertise to the test. Wait a moment. You're not talking about Golden Glow, are you? Even our little Vex couldn't get in. You claim this recruit possesses an aptitude for our line of work, so let him prove it. Golden Glow Estate is critically important to one of our largest clients. However, the owner has suddenly decided to take matters into his own hands and shut us out. He needs to be taught a lesson. Grignol will provide you with the details. Mercer, I've seen a aren't lot you forgetting of something? Come and go, but I've never seen anyone as good as me. Since Grignol assures me you'll be nothing but a benefit to us, then you're in. Welcome to the Thieves Guild. Welcome to the family, lad. I'm expecting you to make us a lot of coin. So don't disappoint me. Simple. Do as you're told and keep your blade clean. We can't turn a profit by killing. You should talk with Delvin, Mallory, and Vex. They know their way around this place, and they'll be able to kick some extra jobs your way. Oh, and talk to Tonelia in the flagon. She'll set you up with your new armor. 
Golden Glow Estate is a bee farm. They raise the wretched little things for honey. It's owned by some smart-mouthed wood elf named Arangoth. We need you to teach him a lesson by burning down three of the estate's hives and clearing out the safe in the main house. The catch is that you can't burn the whole place to the ground. That important client Mercer mentioned would be furious if you did. The guild depends on an arrangement of influential people to keep things running smoothly. Without them at our backs, we'd be in serious trouble. Maven prefers that Arangoth remains alive, but if he tries to stop you from getting the job done, kill him. The guild has a lot riding on this. Don't make me look foolish by mucking it up. Golden Glow Estate brought in a mountain of gold for the guild. You could almost call it our sweetest deal. Then out of the clear blue, Arangoth stopped sending us our cut. Mercer was, well, angry to put it kindly. So we send him Vex and find out he's hired a bunch of mercenaries to guard the place. Aye. Arangoth sent the city guard packing and fortified the entire island. In fact, Vex barely made it out of there alive. You should talk to her about it before you go. They're built like small fortresses to resist the weather, but their one weakness is flame. Besides, nothing tells the people of Riften we mean business better than a huge column of smoke. I'll give you one good reason. Maven Blackbriar. Burn all the hives, and she'd have to import honey for Blackbriar Meadery, which would cut into her profits. We had an arrangement with Maven. We kept an eye on Golden Glow Estate to make sure the honey kept flowing. If the workers had a dispute, we'd rough them up. If competitors tried to buy honey from Arangoth, we'd steal the shipments. In return, Maven allowed us to extort Arangoth and bring in a huge payout. Let me put it to you this way. Nothing happens in Riften without Maven's consent. One word from her, and you could spend the rest of the Fourth Era in prison. You watch yourself on that island. Those mercenaries don't take prisoners. So you made it out. Good for you. Don't expect me to thank you. I still remember what you did to me. What do you want? You've caused enough trouble. This better be important. I'm quite busy. I'd like to know why you're wasting time asking about it when you should already be on your way. I'm watching you. This better be important. I'm quite busy. Don't you have better things to do than disturb me? Need something? Hey, hey! I want to talk to you. Now. You're pretty tough. I respect that. Bringing in a lot of coin for the guild. Making us look good, too. Let me know if you need anything. Okay? I joined up with them maybe ten years ago. Small clan, maybe 20 men. We'd raid villages, rob caravans. But it was always about the killing for them. Don't get me wrong. The first few years with that clan were some of the best years of my life. All the food I could eat, all the wine I could drink, and all the women I could bed. We raided a caravan one spring. I think it was a few wagons with some farmers moving to a new village. They didn't put up much of a fight. All that was left were the women and the children. Then the leader of our clan, Garthek, he ordered us to kill the rest. No, we usually let them go. I refused to do it, and Garthek ordered the clan to kill me as well. Luckily, I had made some friends with the clan who immediately sided with me. We tore each other to pieces. After it was over, those of us that remained simply went our separate ways. I left his head on a pike at the wreckage of the caravan. 
Never knew what became of the rest of the clan that survived. I suppose they moved on just like I did. Go and pick some fights. I hope this deal goes through. Putting quite a bit of Look, if I was a little harsh before, I just want you to know it's because you were new. Know what I mean? Look, I don't really know you. I don't even really know anyone here. Why do you care anyway? It's not like we're family. This is a business. Look, you want to know about me? All right, I'll tell you. I'll tell you about the time I was a young girl, barely out of her teens, living on a pig farm in the middle of nowhere. Didn't have a coin to spend between our entire family. Ate the same slop we fed our livestock. Oh, wait. It gets much better. How about the fact that our farm was attacked by bandits, and that they killed my entire family who didn't even brandish a weapon against them? Here's the best part. They took me as a prize and violated me for a fortnight. Tossed me from bandit to bandit like... like... It's fine. I had to tell someone, I suppose. Carrying around a weight like that, it hurts after a while. Cuts you inside like a dagger to the heart. Over time, I managed to gain their confidence. Then one night, I grabbed a knife, waited until they fell asleep, and cut their throats. I never returned to that pig farm, you know. There's nothing for me there. So that's my sad story. What do you think? Maybe one day. Just not today. I hope we bump into each other again. Wanted to say something to you. I think you're all right. In fact, I'm kind of impressed how well you're doing around here. Just keep it between us, okay? Pull up a chair, my friend. This is quite a tale. When I started out in this business, I wasn't really interested in the guild or being a thief. I'm sure we'll speak again. I've asked, but all I get from him are more questions. What about Mercer? Have you asked him? What's going on? Pull up a chair, my friend. This is quite a tale. When I started out in this business, I wasn't really interested in the guild or being a thief. I didn't mean to imply I was earning an honest living, either. With my lock-picking aptitude, I was a natural at jailbreaking. I made a great deal of gold doing it, too. It's where a client pays you to get arrested. You get thrown into a prison for the express purpose of breaking out. Usually it's to free someone the client cares about, and sometimes to... Well, to kill someone on their behalf. Either way, the trick was in the escape. That's where my strengths came in handy. Well, as a jailbreaker, you work alone. No guild to back you up. I do jobs for the Thieves Guild and the Dark Brotherhood, but if things didn't go as planned, I was on my own. The last jailbreak I attempted failed. I was imprisoned in High Rock for three years before they let me go. After that, I promised myself I'd never do it again. I don't know. I think I realized that out in the world, my skills would bring me more wealth as a thief rather than an assassin. Killing someone in a jail is much easier than what the Dark Brotherhood deals with. I guess I wanted to play it safe. I already knew Delvin. I asked if I could join up, and that was that. Some other time, perhaps. Come here a second. A lot of people are beginning to get impressed with you here. Me included. Just wanted to let you know. Come find me if you need more marksman training. Sure, we can talk. What's on your mind? I used to live in Valenwood, working at my father's winery. We made the finest wine to ever cross your lips, I promise you. We were doing well. Plenty of coin, a huge mansion, and I was even betrothed to a lovely young woman. Because it was dull. Every day was the same boring routine. Working at the winery, social visits with friends, parties with no one I cared about. I just wanted a little excitement. Something dangerous. I hooked up with a guild in Valenwood. 
I think they called themselves the Silver Crescents. Spent quite a few years doing jobs for them. Made a lot of coin, but I didn't care. I didn't really need it. I was running with them because it fit. Made me feel alive. Well, after a while, my father caught on to what I was doing. He confronted me one night and gave me a choice. Either leave Valenwood, or he'd have me thrown into jail. Gave me a day to say my goodbyes to everyone. I ended up in Skyrim thanks to a contact I'd made when I was with the Crescents. Good old Delvin. He introduced me to Gallus, and that was it. I've been here ever since. And you know what? Despite what I left behind, I don't regret it one bit. The honey they collect on that hunk of rock goes into making Blackbriar mead. Just about the best tasting mead in all of Skyrim. If talking your way out of trouble isn't enough, you could always pick up some training from Delvin, Vex, or Vipper. Also, I recommend hitting the training room if you need lockpick practice. Helped me out of a jam more than once. Come find me if you need more marksman training. What's going on? Got a minute? Wanted to say something. I've never seen anyone with skills like yours. I just wanted to let you know that if you need anything, you can talk to me. My father told me he found me as a young boy, in the wreckage of a ship that sank off of the coast near Solitude. All he found in my pocket was a tiny smooth stone inscribed with some sort of strange runes. No one does. I've even taken the damn thing to the College of Winterhold. I must have spent every last coin I've made with the guild trying to find out what it means. Perhaps they could be nonsense, inane scribbles done by someone in idle boredom. But if not, if they actually mean something, they might tell me where I'm from, what ship I was on, everything. Actually, the fisherman who found me, the man I call my father, gave it to me. Thought it was fitting, I suppose. I never changed it because it never felt right to do so. I appreciate that. Be seeing you. Interest you in some marksman training. What's going on? All eyes are on you, lad. Don't disappoint us. You watch yourself on that island. Those mercenaries don't take prisoners. Absolutely. Oh, really? Well then, how can we make that happen? When you're in your grave, and I'm standing over it. Now get out of my way! Before we begin, I want to make two things perfectly clear. One, I'm the best infiltrator this rat hole of a guild's got. So if you think you're here to replace me, you're dead wrong. And two, you follow my lead and do exactly as I say. No questions, no excuses. Easy, huh? So, should I just hand you purses of coin or are you gonna work to earn your keep? Let me give you a small bit of advice. Nothing in this line of work is easy. If it was, every drag in the rat way would be robbing Rift and Blind. If something's being handed to you on a silver platter, then there's a catch. Steal the platter instead. You get it? Then we understand each other. Good. Now, it's time to get your feet wet. And I don't want to waste a lot of time talking about anything but business. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. We're in a bad way down here. Who knows? Old Delvin thinks it's some kind of curse. I think he's crazy. If you want my opinion, I'd say it's just plain old bad luck. You can get out there and start making a name for us again. Make them start fearing us like they did long ago. And while you're at it, make a little bit of coin on the side. 
Not a bad deal, eh? <laughs> yeah, I did. That wood elf's wit. He's a lot smarter than I expected. Can you believe that Fetcher had more than tripled the guard? There must have been eight of them in there. It was like he was daring us to come and get him. Well, there's an old sewer tunnel that dumps into the lake on the northwest side of the island. That's how I slipped in there. Should still be unguarded. Are you kidding me? Ever since the guild's luck turned sour, we haven't had a coin to our name. And when the coin dried up, that's when people started to leave. We had the best of everything down here. The Ratway was a damn palace. The only way this place will ever return to its glory days is if we can finish these extra jobs and start the gold flowing again. The Flagon was once a city beneath the city. We had our own smith, our own alchemist, you name it. If we can make a name for ourselves in Skyrim once again, I can almost promise you those merchants would return. Best of all, we'd have enough gold to throw around so we could start living in the lap of luxury again. If you're ever in need of some quick coin for items you find on the job, Tenelia is the best fence around. And besides myself, Delvin, Niruin, and Vipper can help you with any sort of training you might need to sharpen your skills. Been a while since I've seen one of those. What you've got there is a stone of Baron Zaya. Not like that, it isn't. The stone was pried off of Baron Zaya's ceremonial crown by a thief in order to cover his tracks. I think there were 24 in all. Most people keep them as a curiosity. Some of the guild members have tried to locate them over the years, but they haven't been successful. Well, until now. Look, I only buy things I can turn around quickly for a profit, and no one wants these stones unless they have the whole set. Tell you what, if you find the rest of them, talk to me again. Otherwise, keep it. You Maybe it'll bring you luck. Nice, Almost threw two of them into the well last night. They ain't my boys. I handle the burglary, shell, sweep, and heist jobs. Most of them involve breaking and entering. If you don't like that kind of work, talk to Delvin. He runs the more up-close and personal jobs. Hey, where do you think you're going? We have work to do. I picked up some new clients and did a few jobs on my own, but I'm not sure if that will cover our expenses. Read your fight. Let me guess. He just plucked you off the street and dropped you into the thick of things without telling you which way is up. Am I right? Mercer is being mercer. See, that kind of attitude comes from someone who wants to get rich and stay alive long enough to enjoy it. We're gonna get along nicely. So, if you've got the nerve, I've got plenty of extra jobs to help get the guild back on its feet. Look around you. The flagon, the guild, it's all falling apart. A few decades ago, this place was as busy as the Imperial City. Now, you'd be lucky if you don't trip over a skeever instead. Look, I know the others think I'm a bit dull for saying stuff like this, but I'm gonna give it you straight. Something out there is pissed drunk mad at us. I don't know who or what it is, but it's beyond just you and me. We've been cursed. I'll tell you what we do. We spit in that curse's face and turn things around down here. Put things back the way they were. That's where you come in. I've got plenty of work available that could guide us down the road to recovery. All you need to do is ask, and we can both come out of this smelling like a rose. Well, I see your wounds have healed, but your pride. I handle the fishing, numbers, and bedlam jobs. The ones with a more personal touch. If breaking's a more your thing, go talk to Vex. Hey, this guild needs the coin. We're gonna got lots of jobs available. Interested? Watch yourself out there. The mercenaries are in Goth Hire to train killers. Just ask our poor little Vex.
Years ago, the guild used to have a foothold in every major city in Skyrim. You wouldn't dare even lift an apple without checking with us. When things started going downhill around here, it became difficult to keep it all together. We lost fences, influential contacts, and coin. It wasn't long before we lost what we depend on to survive. Respect. By doing these extra jobs, and putting some fear into the people, we can take back the cities and start being taken seriously once again. Thanks to Maven Blackbriar, we still have some pull in Riften, but get arrested in Whiterun and you'll be tossed right into the prisons. If we gain the confidence of someone very influential who lives there by doing a unique job for them, we'll be able to have some leverage there too. The only way we get that special job is by doing smaller ones in those cities until we catch their ear. Then they'll contact me and we're off. If you're looking to get some coin for the fruits of your labor, you should talk to Tanelia. She sounds tough, but she'll catch you a fair deal. I also suggest you spend some time in the training room. Just talk to Vipa. He'll show you around. What's the matter? Afraid of getting your hands dirty? All eyes are on you, lad. Don't disappoint us. So, feeling loose? How about you run a job for me? So you're the new recruit, huh? Well, looks like you and I are gonna have to get very well acquainted. I'm the fence down here. You come by anything you don't exactly own, and I'll pay you some coin for it. Minus a little slice for the guild, of course. I can also provide a few supplies useful to our trade now and again. For a small fee. Sure, how about I get Dirge to knock you over your head and dump you into the cistern? Look, I've been in this business a long time, and I've seen all types. You can play it tough, or you can play it smart. Whatever. At the end of the day, you'll find that all we care about down here is how much gold you can make us. Good. Then there isn't much more to say. Here's your armor. Just make sure you put it to good use. Well, you could always speak to Delvin or Vex if you're looking for extra work. Or if you're looking for training, we've got plenty of it down here. Delvin, Vex, Nerowin, and Vipper can give you a leg up on that. I've got coin and I've got merchandise. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. Mm-hmm. All eyes are on you, lad. Don't disappoint us. So, you're Brynjolf's new protege, eh? Don't look like much to me. I don't know about the others, but I sure am glad to see a fresh face down here. The flagon used to be packed every night with the boys from the guild. But now look at it. Last few years have been pretty bad. I've almost closed this place up. Now that you mention it, there is. I have a buyer with, uh, shall we say, a very odd taste in literature, looking for some particular books. I'm told they're the ravings of a madman, a wizard named Arundel, and his peculiar cravings. It's said to be spread across four volumes and very hard to come by. My client is offering quite a reward for them, which I'd uh, split with you. Then we have a deal. In his later years, Arundel moved into some ice caves known as Ingvild. He preferred the solitude in which to perform his, uh, experiments. Recently, a woman was found, naked and shivering along the road to Dawnstar. The only information the guard could get from her were tales of strange experiments, and Arundel scribbling in his journals. Only rumors. He used to have a home in Dawnstar until they burned it down. The people say he was doing unspeakable experiments on reanimation, 
rituals only a necromancer would perform. After he made for Ingvild, he was never heard from again. All right. Even if you're one of us, you better not make trouble. Maul? Yeah. That jerk works for Maven Blackbriar now. Left me down here watching this garbage heap. I guess he's better at all that talking stuff anyway. I just mess everything up. They call me Dirge because I'm the last thing you hear before they put you in the ground. Why? You think it's funny or something? No, no. Sorry if I sounded so mean there. My brother always said I have a big mouth. Here, have one on me. I already told you, they call me Dirge because I'm the last thing you hear before they put you in the ground. Mm-hmm. All eyes are on you, lad. Don't huh. I suppose I can work with your face. After all, the sculptor cannot always choose the finest clay. Yes, I once practiced my art in the salons and manners of Tamriel's great and good. Now the scum of Skyrim are my only clients. But no matter, the greatest artists are never recognized in their own time. So, are you here as a client? Shall I remake your face? I have not always been a ragged beggar. I learned my art from the masters of the art of flesh sculpture. I studied with the faculty of chirurgeons and cloudrest. I walked with the hollow-faced men of Nodahogra for three years. I count the nobility of both the Empire and the Dominion among my clients. And yet, I have fallen so low that I must justify myself to a wanderer in the sewers of this backwater of the world. Change it. I can remake your face, if that's what you desire. I do not practice my art for free, however. I doubt you can afford my services. You have the smell of the vagabond about you. Indeed, it is no small thing to submit yourself to the flesh sculptor's knife. Until next time. All eyes are on you, lad. Don't disappoint us. Still have quite a good bit of jobs available, if you're looking for some extra coin. Hey, let's talk a second. You're making waves around here. I like that. If you ever want to talk about anything, you let me know. It was on a job a few years back. It was supposed to be a simple burglary on a house in Windhelm. I was working with Vex, and we got inside with no trouble. We found the loot, and made our way out. Well, it was, up until the point where we set foot outside. The house was surrounded by town guard. The client had ratted us out. Vex just tells me to run. So I did. Half of them went after me, the other half went after her. Huh, are you kidding me? Vex lost them in seconds. Once she steps into the shadows, she vanishes. Me? I ran. And I ran. Straight through the gates of Windhelm. And all the way back to Rift. Vex was waiting for me at the flagon when I came in. Drenched in sweat. Everyone just took a look at me and laughed. 
Well, I had forgotten we had our horses tied up just outside of Windhelm. Vex rode hers back, and arrived hours before I did. So, that's how I earned the name. Now keep it to yourself. I wouldn't bother smacking at those hives with a weapon. Set them on fire, and they'll go up like kindling. I'll point you to the first and last person you're ever going to need to talk to. Tonilia. She's the guild's fence. Treat her right, and she'll make you rich. Try and rip her off, and you'll have the whole guild to answer to. Come back and see me, if you ever need pickpocket training. So, you can cast a few spells. Am I supposed to be impressed? Foosh!
someone there? What was that? You can't win this! <laughs>
Trouble. Is someone, someone there? Ha! Huh, Faust! <laughs>
Now that the Empire has arrived in Riften, we finally established a launching point into Morrowind, just in case. made a mess of things, and Maven's furious. I told you not to burn more than three of the hives. I've smoothed things over with her for now, but you can forget your cut. I've smoothed things over with her for now, but you can forget your cut. At least you remembered one of the things I asked. Let me see that. Arangoth sold Golden Glow? What's that idiot thinking? He has no idea the extent of Maven's fury when she's been cut out of a deal. But I'm certain he'll find out. If only the parchment had the buyer's name instead of this odd symbol. Any idea what that might be? Blast. Well, I'll check my sources and speak to Mercer. But for now, you're off to speak to Maven Blackbriar. She asked for you by name. Don't sound so eager. It's not a social visit. It's business. That's between you and Maven, and I prefer to keep it that way. Just keep your ears open and your mouth shut, and you'll do fine. Maven wants to see you right away. I suggest you head right over. Don't you have better things to do than disturb me? Don't you have better things to do than disturb me? So, you're Brynjolf's new broker. If you're looking for extra work, talk to Vex or Delvin. I've got coin and I've got merchandise. Let's see what we can do.
All right, then. I distinctly heard that lout in the tavern say it was a full shipment of furs. They should be worth a fortune. You idiot. He said furs, not furs. It was a damn logging caravan. Oh, my, uh, well, you won't let mercy be rebounded, will you? <clears throat> Got lots of jobs available. Interested? Well, well. I was looking for this little beauty. If you happen to cross any other unusual trinkets like this, be sure to bring them to me. I promise it'll be worth the effort. There you go. This should cover it. Hey, this guild needs the coin. Walking away without taking it. What do you want? You've come to the right place. Pull up a seat. Looking for work? I need someone to deliver a message to Sibby Blackbriar. So you're the one that burned down Golden Glow Estate. Do you have any idea what that little stunt you pulled is going to cost me? I'm amazed you even bothered to show your face here. The only reason we're having this conversation is due to Brynjolf's assurance you won't botch another assignment. He claims you possess some sort of uncanny aptitude for your line of work. Quite frankly, I find that hard to believe. Is that confidence I hear? Or is it arrogance? Strange how often they're confused. You have to understand, it's been a long time since Brynjolf sent me anyone I can rely on. Faith. I don't have faith in anyone. All I care about is cause and effect. Did the job get done and was it done correctly? There's no gray area. Head to the Bannered Mare in Whiterun and look for Malus Machius. He'll fill you in on all the details. Some layabout named Sabion. Been a thorn in my side for the last few years now. Not a day goes by that I don't regret letting Sabion get as far as he did. In only a few short years, he's taken that bile he calls mead to market and a chunk of my profits with it. I can't imagine where he found the gold to take it to market so quickly. Exactly. With Sabion in prison, his meadery will be forced to close. Then I swoop in and take over the place. No more competition. The Golden Glow estate job has undoubtedly interrupted the supply of honey I need to make my mead. Sabion could use this interruption to his advantage and collect a larger share of the market. I can't have that. One more time, in case I wasn't clear. You butcher this job and you will be sorry.
And for so long, tools, rifles, and weapons, but it's all for sale at fair prices. to you, sir. Let me know if you want anything. <laughs> I think I got a clean mug around here somewhere. Malice is teaching me everything he knows about brewing. Hopefully, I can take over his position someday. Yes. Can't a man drink in peace? Sadia, wake up, dear. Can't a man drink in peace? I'm gonna keep this short, because we've got a lot to do. Haunting Brew's owner, Sabjorn, is about to hold a tasting for Whiterun's Captain of the Guard, and we're going to poison the mead. No, no, that's the beauty of the whole plan. We're going to get Sabjorn to give it to us. The meadery has quite a pest problem, and the whole city knows about it. Pest poison and mead don't mix well. You know what I mean? You're going to happen by and lend poor old Sabjorn a helping hand. He's going to give you the poison to use on the pests, but you're also going to dump it into the brewing vat. Maven and I spent weeks planning this. All we need is someone like you to get in there and get it done. Now get going before Sabjorn grows a brain and hires someone else to do the dirty work. Both of the buildings are connected by tunnels made by the pests infesting the meadery. There's an entrance to it in the basement storeroom of the warehouse that used to be boarded over. I've already removed the boards so the meadery would get infested. That's where you should start. Sabjorn keeps that locked up tight. If you can get through that way, go right ahead. I made the mistake of borrowing coin from Sabjorn. He's allowing me to pay it back, but he's working my fingers to the bone. He treats me like a slave. I have to do every nasty, dirty job in the meadery. If this plan works, not only is my debt gone, but I'll be set up for life. Maven and I worked out a little deal. If Sabjorn ends up in jail, She's gonna take over his meadery. And guess who gets to run the Blackbriar meadery in Whiterun? You're looking at him. Once Sabjorn is out of the way, Maven has plans for the place. One way or another, we don't want the pests coming back. Consider it just more of the dirty work. I did my part getting them in there, now you need to clear them out. You want a drink? Remember, Sabjorn will be needing a helping hand. Make it look good. Depends. Are you thirsty? Hungry? Both.
It's been a pleasure. You're supposed to be at the meeting. Riding to White Run from Old Warwick Stead. And the braggart did swagger and Hi there. As he told of both battles and gold he had made. But then he went quiet, did Ragnar the Red, when he met the shield maiden Matilda, who said, Oh, you talk and you lie and you drink all our mead. Now I think it's high time that you lie down and bleed. And so then came clashing and slashing of steel as the brave lass Matilda charged in full of zeal. Respect, companion. I'd ask that you and your friends muzzle that dog of yours. The howling coming from your Vasker has gotten out of hand. I used to be an adventurer like you. And I took an arrow in the knee. What are you gawking at? Can't you see I have problems here? Are you kidding me? Look at this place. I'm supposed to be holding a tasting of the new hunting brew reserve for the captain of the guard. If he sees the meadery in this state, I'll be ruined. Oh, really? And I don't suppose you'd just do it out of the kindness of your heart, would you? I hope you're not expecting to get paid until the job's done. Well, that's not how I operate, so forget it. Okay, okay. No need to make rash decisions. Here's... You get the rest when the job's done. My only demand is that these vermin are permanently eliminated before my reputation is completely destroyed. I bought some poison. I was going to have my lazy, good-for-nothing assistant, Malice, handle it, but he seems to have vanished. If you plant this in the vermin's nest, it should stop them from ever coming back. Don't come back until every one of those things are dead. Malice is the best deal I've ever made. Lent him a bit of gold some time ago I knew he'd never be able to pay back. Nothing like free labor to make operating costs cheaper. Why are you standing here then? I've told the captain of the guard we'll have the meadery cleared for the tasting, and he could be here any minute. Now I've got to clean up this mess.
ours is to follow, friend. Need me to carry something? May the hist guide us.
Malice is teaching me everything he knows about Rome. Hopefully, I can take over his position someday. I'm the commander of the guard here in Whiterun. Was something we discussed unclear? Well, it's about time. I had to stall the captain until you were finished. You'll just have to wait until after the captain's finished. I suppose you can wait around if you must. Well, Sabjorn, now that you've taken care of your little pest problem, how about I get a taste of some of your mead? Help yourself, my lord. It's my finest brew yet. I call it Hunting Brew Reserve. I think you'll find it quite pleasing to your palate. Oh, come now. This is mead, not some wine to be sipped and savored. By the eight. What... what's in this? I... I don't know. What's wrong? You assured me this place was clean. I'll see... see to it that you remain in irons for the rest of your days. No, please. I don't understand. Silence, idiot. I should have known better to trust this place after it's been riddled with filth. I beg you, please. This is not what it seems. You. You're in charge here until I can sort this all out. It will be my pleasure. And you! You're coming with me to Dragon's Reach. We'll see how quickly your memory clears in the city's prisons. Now, move! Look, I assure you this is all just a huge misunderstanding. I said, move! Farewell, Sabjorn. I don't think that could have gone any better. Anything else you need before you head back to Riften? So, Maven wants to hunt down Sabjorn's private partner, huh? You're welcome to take a look around Sabjorn's office. He keeps most of his papers stashed in his desk. Here, this should help. Start changing it over to the Blackbriar Meadery West as soon as possible. That was Maven's part of the deal. She's put me in charge of keeping the mead flowing, so that's exactly what I'm gonna do. If you're in the area, and you ever need anything fenced, you just let me know. I thought it would be better to leave some of the details out of our previous discussion. I didn't want to risk you walking away from the job. Besides, you've done Maven a favor getting rid of him, and saved me from wasting coin hiring someone else to do it later. Remember to put in a good word with Maven for me. I can't believe that worked.
Remember to put in a good word. I can't believe that worked. Bears? It does not matter to Maik how strong or smart one is. It only matters what one can do. Maik is tired now. Go bother somebody else. And they've got rifting in their grip. Well, hey there. What can Sapphire do for you? Maybe I'll see you hey. around. Hey, good to see you. Yes? to the right place. Pull up a seat. I trust you have good news for me. This doesn't tell me much. The only thing that could identify Sabion's partner is this odd little symbol. Well, whoever this mysterious marking represents, they'll regret starting a war with me. You should bring this information to the Thieves' Guild immediately. There's also the matter of your payment. I believe you'll find this more than adequate for your services. Out of my way. I believe Brynjolf wishes to speak with you. We're done here.
Word on the street is that poor Sabjorn has found himself in White Run's prison. How unfortunate for him. Until next we meet, lad. Exactly. Now you're beginning to see how our little system works. Maven sent word that you discovered something else while you were out there. Something important to the guild? Then this is beyond coincidence. First Arangoth, and now Sabjorn. Someone's trying to take us down by driving a wedge between Maven and the guild. Mercer thinks he knows a way to identify this new thorn in our side. He wants to meet with you right away. And if I were you, I'd hurry. I've never seen him this angry before. No time for idle chatter. Mercer is awaiting your presence. No time for idle chatter. Mercer is awaiting your presence. The Fleet. The only man who's foolish enough to name himself after his bedroom promise. You stupid cow. You don't know what you're missing. No, but I know that you're going to turn up missing if you keep up this kind of talk. Ah, there you are. I've consulted my contacts regarding the information you recovered from Golden Glow Estate, but no one can identify that symbol. It would seem our adversary is attempting to take us apart indirectly by angering Maven Blackbriar. Very clever. They're well funded, and they've been able to avoid identification for years. I'm impressed it reached this point. Just don't mistake my admiration for complacency. Our nemesis is going to pay dearly. Because even after all their posturing and planning, they've made a mistake. The parchment you recovered mentions a Gajal lie. According to my sources, that's an old alias used by one of our contacts. His real name is Gollum I. Golomai is our inside man at the East Empire Company in Solitude. I'm betting he acted as a go-between for the sale of Golden Glow Estate and that he can finger our buyer. Get out there, shake him down, see what you come up with. Talk to Brynjolf before you leave if you have any questions. Erangoth was a fool to think he could get away with this. Golden Glow Estate provided a huge payout for us before Erangoth locked us out. Maven looked the other way as long as the honey kept flowing and we kept him in line. Let's not kid ourselves, Blackbriar Mead is swill. The only thing keeping it successful is Maven. Word on the street was that hunting brew tasted better, cost less, and Sabjorn didn't shove it down everyone's throat. If Sabjorn ever managed to push Maven off her pedestal, we'd all be in trouble. Look, in case you hadn't noticed, these aren't the glory days of the Guild. We've lost more clients in the last decade than I'd care to count, but Maven's stuck with us throughout the entire ordeal. I'll be damned if I'm gonna lose her to... well, to whatever they are. When Gullamai was getting us merchandise from the East Empire Company, we were making a hefty profit. It was so lucrative, I was considering moving the guild to Solitude to save us time. Gullamai started to get greedy and cut us out of the deal. Almost can't say I blame the scaly bastard. It started out innocent enough. He kept claiming the shipments were light because of Imperial interference. Then maybe a few years ago, it all stopped. He didn't even bother to contact us anymore. I need you to put all your efforts into this job. We can't afford any mistakes. A 
I can't believe Gullum Eye's mixed up in all this. That Argonian couldn't find his tail with both hands. Don't get me wrong, he could scam a beggar out of his last septum, but he's no mastermind. Trouble? <laughs> he's one of the most stubborn lizards I've ever met. You have your work cut out for you. You're going to have to buy him off. It's the only way to get his attention. If that fails, follow him and see what he's up to. If I know Gullamai, he's in way over his head, and you'll be able to use it as leverage. I'm glad to see you're embracing our methods. It would be a waste to lose a contact at the East Empire Company before we had the entire story. Just keep on Gollumai's tail, and he's bound to step into something he can't scrape off his boot. There are thieves, and then there is Gollumai. No honor, no code at all. He'd shake your hand and stab you in the back at the same time. The cut he's supposed to provide the guild has dwindled as of late. He says pickings in the warehouse are slim, but I'm certain he's lying. Keep your eyes on him. He's quite crafty. Just head right back to the guild and get the information to Mercer. Nothing else is more important. If you discover Gullum Eyes holding out on us and has more loot stashed away than he claims, we'd find that information quite valuable as well. A mercantile group that has established ports all over Tamriel. They pretty much dominate the whole shipping industry. The Emperor himself supposedly backs them, which means they have fairly unlimited resources. So don't get their feathers in a ruffle. <laughs> Gullamai works in the East Empire Company warehouse. He helps maintain all of the shipments of goods that goes in and out of solitude. That means he has the pick of the litter from some of the finest goods to grace Skyrim shores. He isn't exactly in the guild, but he pays us a cut of all the stuff he lifts from the warehouse. Good luck in solitude. Keep Gullamai alive. But remind him who we are. So, is it, what do you need? Get, you know, real friendly with the wildlife. <laughs> what do you need? You're an idiot. You want to talk to me? Yeah. Okay. Sure, we can talk. Go and pick some fights. Some Back from a job, job, huh? Hope it if went you need well. pickpocket training, what do you want? That caused no. enough trouble. Need any more pickpocket training? Should have quite a good bit of jobs available if you're looking for some extra coin. If so, you're looking for extra work, talk to Vex or Delvin. I give special rates to members of the Thieves Guild. Show me what you've got. Until next time. Absolutely. Looking for wood. When you're in your grave, and I'm standing.
Well, well. I was looking for this little beauty. If you happen to cross any other unusual trinkets like this, be sure to bring them to me. I promise it'll be worth the effort. I think you'll find this payment to be more than fair. Could I give you a little tip? Take every job you can get. Well, hey there. What can Sapphire do for you? to yourself, sneak thief. the coast ways to the east, you'll find the wreck of the Brine Hammer. Never know what treasures may still be aboard. Until next time. Warm food, warm drinks, and warm beds. So, what do we have here? Hmm, let me guess. By your scent, I'd say you were from the guild. But that can't be true, because I told Mercer I wouldn't deal with them anymore. I don't deal in land or property. Now, if you're looking for goods, you've come to the right person. Oh, wait. Did you say Golden Glow Estate? Uh, my apologies. I'm sorry to say I know very little about that uh, bee farm, was it? Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I can't be expected to remember every deal I handle.
I don't care what you promise. If I tell you the buyer's name and word gets around, it can ruin me. Hasn't Mercer Frey taught you people anything? You kill me, and your only contact with the East Empire Company vanishes. That's not smart for business. Well, now that you mention it, there is something I've been trying to get my hands on. I have a buyer looking for a case of Firebrand wine. It just so happens to be a single case in the Blue Palace. Bring it to me, and we'll talk about Golden Glow Estate. No Firebrand wine yet? How disappointing. Just stoke the fire. Take a seat and get the cold out. Ah, I see you have the wine. Hand it over, and we'll talk. Good. Can't have the buyer getting impatient and looking elsewhere for this, can we? Here, take this. I certainly can't use it, but I suppose I need to pay you something for the goods. Not at all. I consider it an investment in prolonging my life. As far as Golden Glow Estate goes, I'll tell you what I know. I was approached by a woman who wanted me to act as the broker for something big. She flashed a bag of gold in my face and said all I had to do was pay Arangoth for the estate. I brought in the coin and walked away with her copy of the deed. Not at all. I tend not to ask too many questions when I'm on the job. I'm sure you understand. However, I did notice she was quite angry, and it was being directed at Mercer Frey. In this business, we rarely deal in names. Our identity comes from how much coin we carry. Look, that's all I know. I never promised you I'd have all the answers. Now, since our transaction is done, I'll be on my way. Our business has concluded and you're standing in my way. Why are you following me? I told you I don't know anything else. I wish only to graduate and enroll with the Legion. My drums will lead our troops to victory.
told you everything. Now leave me alone. Forget wine, women, and wealth. Give me a calm sea and a good book, and I'm happy. Talk to Ed Brothers. Deja has no words for you. Good business for the East Empire Company means all the more gold for the Empire.
not for show, See how and someone that. had to die. Is, Is someone, someone there? there? Thought I heard something. Just die. Oh, what?
anything rash this isn't as bad as it seems now there's no need to do anything rash this isn't as bad as it seems I was gonna tell Mercer about everything honestly please he'll have me killed all right all right it's Carlia her name is Carlia Mercer never told you about her? Carlia is the thief responsible for murdering the previous guildmaster, Gallus. Now she's after Mercer. Help? No, no. Look, I didn't even know it was her until after she contacted me. Please, you have to believe me. I don't know. When I asked her where she was going, she just muttered, where the end began. Here, take the Golden Glow estate deed as proof. And when you speak to Mercer, tell him I'm worth more to him alive. You needed to know more? Now you're speaking my language. Tell you what, if you need any stolen goods fenced, you bring them to me, and I'll pay you good money for them. Consider me your new friend in the North. I asked her the same thing, and she wouldn't come out and tell me. But now that I know who she is, I'd say she's trying to hit the Thieves' Guild where it hurts. Maven Blackbriar needs Golden Glow's honey for her mead. She's been using the Guild to keep the estate under her thumb. If the owner cuts the Guild out of the picture, he's cutting Maven out of the picture, which she can't afford. If I was Maven, I'd blame the guild for weakening and not being able to handle the place. Exactly. For the guild to survive, they need Maven's support. This Carlia must have spent a lot of time and resources planning this. Consider it a gift to ensure your silence. That thing seems to be bringing me nothing but trouble anyway. Carlia didn't even want it. She wanted to keep the sale a secret. I can see how well that went. Now you won't forget to tell Mercer I cooperated, will you?
to know more. something
matter what else happens, the gods will always be grateful for everything you've done. What do you want? You've caused enough trouble. What did you need? Did Gullamai give up any information on our buyer? No, it, it can't be. I haven't heard that name in decades. This is grave news indeed. She's someone I hope to never cross paths with again. Carlia destroyed everything this guild stood for. She murdered my predecessor in cold blood and betrayed the guild. After we discovered what she'd done, we spent months trying to track her down, but she just vanished. Carlia and I were like partners. I went with her on every heist. We watched each other's backs. I know her techniques, her skills. If she kills me, there'll be no one left that could possibly catch her. If only we knew where she was. There's only one place that can be. The place where she murdered Gallus. A ruin called Snowvale Sanctum. We have to go out there before she disappears again. Yes, I'm going with you, and together we're going to kill her. Here's your payment for solitude. Prepare yourself and meet me at the ruins as soon as you can. We can't let her slip through our fingers. Quickly, what do you want? She was a stubborn Dunmer. Always had to do everything her way. But she was also the best, bringing in more coin a month than some thieves heist in a year. Gallus trusted her too much and let her get too close. If you want to call it that, yes. Me? I think she was softening him for the kill. Gallus would call her his little nightingale. He was absolutely smitten by her. Greed? Jealousy? Spite? Who can say what drove her to such an iniquitous act? One thing's certain I intend to find out before she draws her last breath. I have a long-standing arrangement with the Dark Brotherhood. If I need someone in the guild taken care of, we do it ourselves. We both agree it's best to keep these matters in-house. When you're ready, meet me at Snowvale Sanctum. Need something? Something? Sorry, lad. I've got important things to do. We'll speak another time. Sorry, lad. I've got important things to do. Well, looks like you're fitting in well down here. I'm supposed to allow you to trade in one of your pieces of guild armor. So what will it be? Of course. Otherwise it wouldn't be much of a reward, now would it? Your new piece will enhance your skill beyond that of the original. Trust me. Are you sure? Once I exchange it for you, I'm not taking it back. Unless you want to sell it at a discount, of course. Okay, there you go. <coughs> if you're looking for extra work, talk to Vex or Delvin. I've got coin and I've got merchandise. Let's see what we can do.
I have work if you've got the backbone. Still have quite a good bit of jobs available, if you're looking for some extra coin. Well, well. I was looking for this little beauty. If you happen to cross any other unusual trinkets like this, this should compensate you for your find. There's plenty more work than the likes of you.
finally here. I've scouted the ruins and I'm certain Carlia is still inside. No, I found her horse. Don't worry, I've taken care of it. She won't be using it to escape. Let's get moving. I want to catch her inside while she's distracted. Take the lead. Just make certain you keep your eyes open. Carlia is as sharp as a blade. The last thing I need is you blundering into a trap and warning her that we're here. 25 years ago, I was standing outside these very same ruins. Gallus told me to meet here, but he wouldn't say why. When I arrived, Gallus stepped from the shadows. Before he uttered a sound, an arrow pierced his throat. Before I could even draw my blade, her second arrow found its mark in my chest. Carlia was a master marksman, and her greatest weapon was the element of surprise. I was lucky. She missed my heart by mere inches. I staggered away from the ruins and my vision began to blur. It's then that I realized the bitch had poisoned her arrows. The last thing I saw was Carlia dumping his body into an opening atop the ruins. An unceremonious end for a remarkable man. To this day, I've regretted allowing her to escape, even if it meant I had died trying. I owed Gallus that much. The guild was thrown into disarray. Several stepped up and tried to claim Gallus' former position as guildmaster. Sides quickly formed behind these men and the Ratway became a bloodbath. I saw what they did to Gallus. I wanted to use the guild's resources to hunt down Carlia. The others didn't even care he was gone. Fortunately, I persevered and the other groups were either killed or they left Skyrim. The infighting had taken months to subside, which gave her time to go into hiding and carefully cover her tracks. I spent thousands of septums and used every contact at my disposal. But it was as if she had simply vanished. Like I said before, she was the best. That's enough of this unnecessary chatting. We need to keep going.
They say that these ancient Nordic burial mounds are sometimes impenetrable. Hmm, this one doesn't look too difficult. Quite simple, really. I don't know what the fuss is about these locks. All it takes is a bit of know-how, and a lot of skill. That should do it. Hmph! <laughs> 
lead on. Need me to carry something? Let's tread softly. Bone chimes. Clever. Wake to wake the drogger, I bet. No blunder in any.
Vamos. something lead I'll follow Oblivion and back. Need me to carry something? Let's tread softly. Infamous Nordic puzzle doors. How quaint. Without the matching claw, they're normally yeah. impossible to open. Since I'm certain Carlia already did away with it, we're on our own. Fortunately, these doors have a weakness if you know how to exploit it. Quite simple, really. Carlia's close, I'm certain. Now let's get moving. finds your heart. Give me a reason to try. You're a clever girl, Carlia. Buying Golden Glow Estate and funding Haunting Brew Meadery was inspired. To ensure an enemy's defeat, you must first undermine his allies. It was the first lesson Gallus taught us. You always were a quick study. Not quick enough. Otherwise Gallus would still be alive. Gallus had his wealth and he had you. All he had to do was look the other way. Did you forget the oath we took as Nightingales? Did you expect him to simply ignore your methods? Enough of this mindless banter. Come, Carlia. It's time for you and Gallus to become reunited. I'm no fool, Mercer. 
crossing blades with you would be a death sentence. But I can promise the next time we meet, it will be your undoing. How interesting. It appears Gallus's history has repeated itself. Carlia has provided me the means to be rid of you, and this ancient tomb becomes your final resting place. But you know what intrigues me the most? The fact that this was all possible because of you. Farewell. I'll be certain to give Brynjolf your regards. Easy. Don't get up so quickly. How are you feeling? No. I saved your life. My arrow was tipped with a unique paralytic poison. It slowed your heart and kept you from bleeding out. Had I intended to kill you, we wouldn't be having this conversation. My original intention was to use that arrow on Mercer, but I never had a clear shot. I made a split-second decision to get you out of the way, and it prevented your death. I promise you, the thought crossed my mind. The poison on that arrow took me a year to perfect. I only had enough for a single shot. All I had hoped was to capture Mercer alive. Mercer must be brought before the guild to answer for what he's done. He needs to pay for Gallus's murder. My purpose in using Snowvale Sanctum to ambush Mercer wasn't simply for irony's sake. Before both of you arrived, I recovered a journal from Gallus's remains. I suspect the information we need is written inside. I wish I knew. The journal is written in some sort of language I've never seen before. Enther. Gallus's friend at the College of Winterhold. Of course. The only outsider Gallus trusted with the knowledge of his Nightingale identity. There were three of us. Myself, Gallus, and Mercer. We were an anonymous splinter of the Thieves' Guild in Riften. Perhaps I'll tell you more about it later. Right now, you need to head for Winterhold with the journal and get the translation. Here, take these as well. They may prove useful for your journey. He was a scholar, a master thief and a natural leader. Everyone respected him and followed him without question. It was Gallus who inducted me into the Nightingales and honed my skills to a razor-sharp point. I owe everything to him. We were... very close. Gallus once said he felt comfortable around me, able to let his guard down. I can't help but think that I'm responsible for what happened to him. I'm afraid not. There are preparations to make and Gallus's remains to lay to rest. I promise to join you there as soon as I can. Mercer lied to the Guild, branded me a murderer, and slandered my name across his network of contacts. For 25 years I ran, never sleeping in the same place twice and carefully covering my tracks. Mercer doesn't need to die. He needs to feel the cold sting of fate as his life crumbles in front of him and he's hunted by the Guild. I can promise you if it comes to that, and my back's to the wall, I won't hesitate. Remember, speak only to Enther. Trust no one else. 
Please. There isn't much time. What is it? No lollygagging. Out. Need me to carry something? Let's tread softly.
sorry, could you describe the smell? Like some horrible monster was turned inside out and then exploded. What did you do? I'll sell just about anything if it's worth my time. Keep I've already corrected you. your future experiments. This. This is why people have a problem with your college, Nelikar. Come on in. Let me know if you need anything. Or take a seat by the fire and I'll send someone over. Yes, yes, what is it? Hmm. Can I help you with anything else? Carlia? Then she's finally found it. Do you have Gallus's journal? No problem. Let me see it. Ah, oh, this is just like Gallus. A dear friend, but always too clever for his own good. He's written all of the text in the Falmer language. No. However, I know someone who might. The court wizard of Markarth, Calselmo, may have the materials you need to get this journal translated. Word of warning, Calselmo is a fierce guardian of his research. Getting the information won't be easy. Besides the fact that there are only a handful of people in Tamriel that even recognize the language, I'm fairly certain he was planning some sort of a heist that involved a deep understanding of the Falmer language. Sadly, we never had the opportunity to speak about the details. Ironically, I pointed him in the same direction I pointed you, to Markarth and Calselmo. I'm only hoping whatever means he used to learn the language will still be available to you. He was a dear friend of mine, and a surprisingly astute pupil of Academia. I was devastated when he was killed. I suppose that risk always coexisted with his line of work. I just never thought his luck would run out. the thrill, of course. He was quite clear that he felt more in his element climbing through a window rather than hunched over a dusty tome. <laughs> ah, yes, quite an amusing anecdote, actually. I caught him trying to break into my laboratory. I was about to show him the error of his ways when he made a curiously astute comment about my research notes. I was astounded, and in turn it led to a conversation. Who would have imagined it would lead to such a strong friendship? In the time before man, they were known as the Snow Elves. They lived in the sunlight and had a very prosperous society. Yes, I would say their culture quite possibly rivaled our own. The Nords went to war with the Falmer in the First Era. Killed them by the thousands to drive them from their snowy homeland. The Falmer retreated underground and forged an uneasy alliance with the Dwarves who ended up betraying them. This betrayal made them what they are now, horrible, blind monstrosities with a burning hatred of any but their own kind. Why shouldn't I? The Falmer have killed more than a fair share of my acquaintances. They're animals. They show absolutely no pity or remorse. If you wish to learn more about them, you're welcome to my tome on the subject. Should be on my table. My days at the college are long behind me, but I prefer to stay close by. Dagor and I have an understanding. He gives me...
Useless.
Look, I'm very busy, so this better be important. What are you doing here? The excavation site is closed. I don't need any more workers or guards. Le Chouenzel? The ruins underneath Markarth? The wealth of artifacts that I've based two human lifetimes of research on? You idiot! Do you even know who I am? The most recognized scholar on the Dwemer in all of Tamriel. And you people keep bothering me. I... I'm sorry, I... I got too excited. I'm in the middle of some very stressful work. And I, and I shouldn't have yelled. How can I help you? Then you were well informed. I am at this very moment on the cusp of completing my magnum opus on the subject. I'm calling it Calselmo's Guide to the Former Tongue. It will revolutionize the way we understand those ancient beings. Preposterous! That research represents years of personal toil in some of the most dangerous Dwemer ruins in Skyrim. You must be mad to think I'd allow anyone to see it before it's completed. While I appreciate the sentiment, I still have to decline. Being an admirer, I'm sure you can appreciate the need to keep my research a secret. Do you realize that at a snap of my fingers, I can bring the entire Markarth city guard to my defense? You best rethink this course of action, or you may find yourself on the executioner's block. I'm not certain how many scholars you're accustomed to dealing with, but I can assure you that personal wealth is our lowest priority. Very well. Perhaps when my research is complete, I'll feel more comfortable discussing my findings with you. This better be important. Yes. Their history and culture is all around us in Markarth, a race of stonecutters, artisans, and engineers. They invented machines and built elaborate underground cities where they researched powers to rival the gods themselves. And then, at a time we are still not sure when, they disappeared. The whole people, all at once, leaving behind only their works. to protect my research, for one. There are more cutthroat scholars out there who would steal my findings if they got the chance. And the excavations into Nichuanzel are dangerous. Dwemer machines and traps still functional, even after thousands of years. Persistent, aren't you? Oh, very well. Who am I to stand in the way of curiosity? I'll let you in if you agree to something for me. There's a giant spider in the Chuanzel. My workers call her Nimi, the poisoned one. If you deal with Nimi, I'll let you into both the excavation site and my Dwemer Museum. What do you say? Enthusiasm. Good. Here's the key to the dig site. Try not to disturb me in the future. I'm in the midst of groundbreaking research.
Emperor Selmo called in his entire expedition team. Said he needed every man he could get to protect his research. Better them than us. We lost three good men to the trap. And for what? Just to see another damn spider banging around. Well, at least this post is safe enough. Come on, let's get back to work.
Got to keep my... Hey, you mix potions, right? Can you brew me an ale? by the fire and I'll send someone off. I do what's necessary my days for college I behind have me, to, I since I can't count on my brother for anything. Back, eh? And how was our friend Caselmo? Was there something else? I suppose it would be inappropriate of me to ask how you obtained this, so I simply won't. A rubbing, eh? Odd. I expected notes. I understand. Now, let me take a good look at this. Over here, please. Hmm. This is intriguing. But highly disturbing. It appears that Gallus had suspicions about Mercer Frey's allegiance to the Guild for months. Gallus had begun to uncover what he calls an unduly lavish lifestyle replete with spending vast amounts of gold on personal pleasures. Does the journal say where this wealth came from? Yes, Gallus seemed certain that Mercer had been removing funds from the Guild's treasury without anyone's knowledge. Anything else, Enther? Anything about... the Nightingales? Yes, here it is. The last few pages seem to describe the failure of the Nightingales, although it doesn't go into great detail. Gallus also repeatedly mentions his strong belief that Mercer desecrated something known as the Twilight Sepulchre. Shadows preserve us, so it's true. I... I'm not familiar with the Twilight Sepulchre. What is it? What's... what's Mercer Frey done? I'm sorry, Anther. I can't say. All that matters is we deliver your translation to the Guild immediately. Farewell, Anther. Words can't express. It's all right, Carlia. You don't have to say a word. Hmm? Listen. All I want is the truth to be revealed to the Guild. They respected Carlia, and she deserves better. Do whatever you can, and I'd consider it a personal favor. If trying to rid yourself of stolen goods becomes a burden and you find yourself in Witterhold, visit me at the college. I've been known to handle items of questionable interest from time to time, and I'll see what I can do. If you have further need of me, you can find me in the college. We must hasten to Riften before Mercer can do any more damage to the guild. You've come this far, so I see no harm in concealing it any longer. 
The Twilight Sepulchre is the temple to Nocturnal. It's what the Nightingales are sworn to protect with their lives. Everything that represents Nocturnal's influence is contained within the walls of the Sepulchre. Now it seems Mercer's broken his oath with Nocturnal and defiled the very thing he swore to protect. I felt the same way when Gallus first revealed these things to me. I think given time you'll understand what I mean. As a Nightingale, I've been sworn to secrecy regarding the Sepulchre. I know the Guild doesn't do much to foster faith, but I'm going to have to ask that you continue to trust me. I'll make for Riften and scout the situation, see if I can discover what Mercer's up to. When you're ready, meet me at the Ragged Flagon. In the meantime, I wanted you to have this. It belonged to Gallus, but given the circumstances, I think he'd approve. If the Guild isn't willing to listen to reason, you might have to. I'm assuming you're here for more than a social call. Down to business, eh? To oblivion and back, as they say. Need me to carry something? Lead, I'll follow. you're bringing me another round, you can just keep walking.
you're here. I think some of these people are beginning to suspect who I am. Are you ready to face the guild? Keep your eyes open. I'm not sure what to expect when we enter the system. Even if you're one of us, you better not make trouble. No tricks, Carlyle, or I'll cut you down where you stand. Now what's this so-called proof you speak of? I have Gallus's journal. I think you'll find its contents disturbing. Let me see. No, it can't be. This can't be true. I've known Mercer too long. It's true, Brynjolf. Every word. Mercer's been stealing from the guild for years. Right under your noses. There's only one way to find out if what the lass says is true. Delvin, I'll need you to open the vault. Wait just a blessed moment, Bryn. What's in that book? What did it say? It says Mercer's been stealing from our vault for years. Gallus was looking into it before he was murdered. How can Mercer open up a vault that needs two keys? It's impossible. Could he pick his way in? That door has the best puzzle locks money can buy. There's no way it can be picked open. He didn't need to pick the lock. What's she all about? Use your key on the vault, Delvin. We'll open it up and find out the truth. I've used my key, but the vault's still locked up tighter than a drum. Now use yours. Everything's gone. Get in here, all of you. The gold. It's yours. It's all gone. That son of a bitch. I'll kill him. Vex, put it away. Right now. We can't afford to lose our heads. We need to calm down and focus. Do what he says, Vex. This ain't helping right now. We do it your way. For now. Delvin, Vex, watch the flagon. If you see Mercer, come tell me right away. Got lots of jobs available. Interested? Delvin, please tell me you have good news. If I see I told you that. Lock his eyes lying. from his skull with my bare we hands. Had that weeks. Our clients are starting to get angry. Hmm? You tell this sorry bunch of thieves that they need to put down their flagons and get to work if they want to keep their status. Now yeah, I will, I will. Need to stay focused in case Frey comes back. Make it fast. Look, give up now. before I help you track Mercer down, I need to know what you learned from Carlia. I mean, everything. I... I feared that was the case. From that last entry in Gallus's diary, it looks like he was getting close to exposing Mercer to the guild. Anything else? What? Nightingales? But I always assumed they were just a tale. A way to keep the young footpads in line. 
Was there anything else she told you? Trying to make Mercer look bad in front of Maven, eh? Clever lass. Was there anything else? Then I have an important task for you. I need you to break into Mercer's home and search for anything that could tell us where he's gone. Aye. A gift from the Black Briars after they kicked the previous family out. A place called Riftweald Manor. He never stays there, just pays for the upkeep on it. Hired some lout by the name of Bold to guard the place. Be careful, lad. This is the last place in Skyrim I'd ever want to send you. Just find a way in, get the information and leave. And you have permission to kill anyone that stands in your way. Good question. I've only set foot inside a few times myself, and that was in Mercer's company. If you can get past his trained watchdog, I think your best bet might be the ramp to the second floor balcony in his backyard. No. It's some sort of crazy contraption Mercer commissioned for quick escapes. I'd wager a well-placed shot at the ramp's mechanism would lower it in a hurry. Huh. That'd be bald. A real piece of work, that one. Mercer's holding something over his head, keeping him loyal. Talk to Vex. She used to know him very well, if you catch my meaning. Better question would be, what did he leave? Mercer took everything. Even all of our plans are gone. Before Mercer took over, Gala started collecting every bit of material he could on locations the guild could heist. Museums, keeps, estates, you name it. By the time Mercer took over the guild, we must have had a few dozen. I don't have a clue. That door is impenetrable. Without two keys, it's impossible to open. I have a key, Delvin has a key, and Mercer has a key. That's it. There are no other copies. Careful at Mercer's place. I don't want to lose anyone else to that madman. I can't believe he emptied the vault. Right from under our noses. I dare Mercer to come back here. He sets one foot in the cistern and I'll cut it off. I'm relieved when the offers an open mind, or that could have gotten bloody. Need to stay focused in case Frey comes back. Make it fast. That pig? Oh, I have info on him. More than you care to know. Vald? Good side? Think you have the wrong person. The only thing Vald understands is gold. A man after my own heart. Sure, but he'll ask for a whole lot. I mean, you are asking him to betray Mercer Frey. Your best bet would be to erase his debt with Maven Blackbriar. If you talk to her, she might be able to give you the details. Of course, you could just run him through and take what you need off his corpse. You I could care less. You to play nice, Delvin. Almost threw two of them into the well last night. While you're in there, help yourself to anything in Frey's Manor. I would. You know what I mean. Tell your boss that rough is rough, but when someone pulls a dagger, fun time is over. I'll pass it along. There's no doubt Mercer will make for the borders of Skyrim. I hope you find him before he escapes our grasp. Usual guild rape? Let's take a look at them.
If you find Mercer, give no quarter. Kill him and be done with it. Can't talk long. Gotta keep my eyes out for Mercer. Well, well. I was looking for this little beauty. If you happen to cross any other unusual trinkets, what a delightful find. This should cover it. Well, well. I was looking for this little beauty. If you happen to cross any other unusual... It's worth quite a bit, actually. Quite a catch. There you go. This should make you smile. This is getting dangerous. Don't let anything get a jump on you. should have come here.
ours is to follow, friend. Need me to carry something? Cultural blog. Gotta keep my eyes open for Bursa. Well, well. I was looking for this little beauty. If you happen to cross any other unusual trinkets, 
must have come from Mercer's place. He'd admired the Grey Fox for some time. Sure, I'll buy it from you. Here you are. This is getting dangerous. Don't let anything get a jump on you. Scoured the town and I've spoken to every contact we have left. No sign of Mercer. Any luck on your end? Shore's beard. He's going after the eyes of the Falmer? That was Gallus' pet project. If he gets his hands on them, you can be certain he'll be gone for good and set up for life. Agreed. He's taken everything the Guild has left. And to go after one of the last greatest heists is just an insult. I've spoken to Carlia and made amends for how the guilds treated her. Now she wishes to speak with both of us. Quickly, we have no time to lose. Until next we meet, lot. Not now, lot. Carlia said it was important. The only man is What do you want? You've caused enough trouble. Down. Don't know what you're missing. No, but I know that you're not missing. Don't miss the time has come to decide Mercer's fate. Until a new guildmaster is chosen, the decision falls to you. I lass, and I've come to a decision. Mercer Frey tried to kill both of you. He betrayed the guild. Murdered Gallus and made us question our future. He needs to die. We have to be very careful, Brynjolf. Mercer is a Nightingale, an agent of Nocturnal. And it's all true. Everything I heard in the stories. The Nightingales, their allegiance to Nocturnal, and the Twilight Sepulchre. Yes. That's why we need to prepare ourselves and meet Mercer on equal footing. Just outside of Riften. Beyond the southeast gate is a small path cut up the mountainside. At the end of that path is a clearing and an old standing stone. I'd ask you both to meet me there. I'm preparing to leave for the standing stone. What is it? I have some preparations of my own to make. I'll meet you at the stone. I have some preparations of my own to make. I'll meet you at the stone. To oblivion and back. Need me to carry something? work if you've got the backbone. Looking for work? If you're looking for extra work, usual guild rate, let's take a look at them. Until next time. Good news. So, it's one thing to say you got How about you run a job? Yeah. 
Sure, we can talk.
want you here. This is the headquarters of the Nightingales, cut into the mountainside by the first of our kind. We've come to seek the edge we need to defeat Mercer Frey. If you'll follow me, I'll try to explain on the way. Gallus, Mercer Frey and I were once members of what's known as the Nightingale Trinity. The Trinity disbanded 25 years ago when Mercer Frey betrayed us by slaying Gallus and dumping his body in the ruins of Snowvale Sanctum. Indirectly. The Trinity is usually selected from the ranks of the Guild, although its existence is a closely guarded secret. The Nightingales protect the Temple of Nocturnal, a place known as the Twilight Sepulchre. She's the mistress of night and darkness, and the patron of every thief in Tamriel. Nocturnal isn't one for worship and reverence. There are no priests and no sermons, no services, and no arms. She influences our luck, and in return, demands payment. You're closer to understanding than you realize. The only difference is she doesn't demand payment in the traditional sense, and sometimes the cost can be quite high. Whether you know it or not, Nocturnal dictates how well we perform as rogues. Again, you have to think differently. Haven't you ever noticed how our luck behaves? Like a novice picking an impossible lock? Or a blind man suddenly turning to face you as you reach for his pocket. It's through these subtle means that Nocturnal influences us. Nocturnal's whim is the greatest mystery to everyone. There have been volumes written on the subject. Does she accept payment when we die? When we suffer, does she revel in our misery? No one knows. The return certainly seems worth the risk, though. From the moment you were struck with my poisoned arrow at Snowvale Sanctum, my path changed its course. Perhaps I couldn't bring Mercer back alive, but together, we were able to clear my name and to put Gallus's memory to rest. I'd always intended Mercer's fate to ultimately be decided by the Guild, and it seems they've spoken. It's my hope that you will, yes. This way, please. I'm just as puzzled as you lot. So this is Nightingale Hall. I heard about this place when I joined the guild, but I never believed it existed. The assumption that the Nightingales were just a myth was seeded within the guild on purpose. It helped avert attention from our true nature. What's wrong, Brynjolf? I can almost hear you growl furrowing. I'm trying to understand why I'm here, lass. I'm no priest, and I'm certainly not religious. Why pick me? This isn't about religion, Brynjolf. It's business. Is still out there. Let's get this show on the road.
You appear hesitant to don your nightingale armor. What's troubling you? Time's wasted, and Mercer's still out there. Let's get this show on the road. You appear ready for the oath. Time's wasted, and Mercer's still out there. Okay, lass. We've got these get-ups on. Now what? Beyond this gate is the first step in becoming a Nightingale. Whoa there, lass. I appreciate the armor, but becoming a Nightingale? That was never discussed. To hold any hope of defeating Mercer, we must have Nocturnal at our backs. If she's to accept you as one of her own, an arrangement must be struck. What sort of arrangement? I need to know the terms. The terms are quite simple, Brynjolf. Nocturnal will allow you to become a Nightingale, and use your abilities for whatever you wish. And in return, both in life and in death, you must serve as a guardian of the Twilight Sepulchre. Aye, there's always a catch. But at this point, I suppose there isn't much to lose. If it means the end of Mercer Frey, you can count me in. What about you? Are you ready to transact the oath with Nocturnal? By transacting the oath with Nocturnal, you're entering into a business deal. You'll be provided all of the power and knowledge befitting a Nightingale. You're free to use those powers as you see fit, to further your own goals, or the goals of the Thieves' Guild. In return, you'll be required to defend the Twilight Sepulchre and everything within when the need arises. More importantly, upon your death, your spirit will be bound to the Twilight Sepulchre, as one of its guardians. Once the oath has been struck, the terms are binding. Knowing this, are you ready to undergo the ceremony? Good. After I open the gate, please stand on the circle. We'll speak when the oath is complete. Time's wasting, and... Usher's still out there. Let's get this show on the road. Force which should... What about you? Are you ready to transact the oath with Nocturnal? Good. After I open the gate, please stand on the circle. Boosh! We'll speak when the oath is complete. We'll speak when the oath is complete. This is enough to make your head spin, eh?
Lead on. I'm behind. Go ahead. What is it? What do you want? Do you need anything else? I call upon you, Lady Nocturnal, Queen of Murk, and Empress of Shadow. Hear my voice. Ah, Carlia. I was wondering when I'd hear from you again. Lose something, did we? My lady, I've come before you to throw myself upon your mercy and to accept responsibility for my failure. You're already mine, Carlia. Your terms were struck long ago. What could you possibly offer me now? I have two others that wish to transact the oath. To serve you both in life and in death. You surprise me, Caroline. This offer is definitely weighted in my favor. My appetite for Mercer's demise exceeds my craving for wealth, Your Grace. Revenge. How interesting. Very well. The conditions are acceptable. You may proceed. Lady Nocturne, we accept your terms. We dedicate ourselves to you as both your Avengers and your Sentinels. We will honor our agreement in this life and the next, until your conditions have been met. Very well. I name your initiates Nightingale, and I restore your status to the same, Carlisle. And in the future, I'd suggest you refrain from disappointing me again. You've transacted the oath. It's time to reveal the final piece of the puzzle to you. Mercer's true crime. Mercer was able to unlock the guild's vault without two keys because of what he stole from the Twilight Sepulchre. The skeleton key. By doing this, he's compromised our ties to Nocturnal and in essence, caused our luck to run dry. Well, yes. But the key isn't only restricted to physical barriers. All of us possess untapped abilities, the potential to wield great power securely sealed within our minds. Once you realize the key can access these traits, the potential becomes limitless. I'm afraid that's impossible. If the key isn't returned to its lock in the Twilight Sepulchre, things will never be the same for the Guild. As time passed, our luck would diminish to the point of non-existence, and whether you know it or not, our uncanny luck defines our trade. Very true. In our line of work, it's quite rare we set out to return a stolen item to its rightful owner. Before we depart, Brynjolf has some business to discuss. I suggest you listen to him. Listen, lad. There's one last piece of business we need to settle before we go after Mercer. The leadership of the guild. Carlia and I had a long discussion before you arrived here. Thanks to your efforts, Mercer's treachery has been exposed. After we deal with him, all that remains is restoring the guild to its full strength. As a result, we both feel that you have the potential of replacing Mercer as leader of the Thieves' Guild. I've been at this game a long time, my friend. A long time. I've stolen trinkets from nobles and framed priests for murder. I'm good at what I do, maybe even one of the best, but it's all I know. I've never been one to lead. Never desired it, never cared for it, don't want it. Well, we have a bit of an errand to run before your coronation, so don't get sentimental on me now. Then it's decided. When this is all over and Delvin's contacts assure me that we've regained our footing in Skyrim, we'll handle the details. Until then, 
We have quite the task ahead. I've been poring over the plans you brought us, and I'm convinced the eyes of the Falma are in the Dwarven ruins at Urkenthan. Carlia and I will meet you there. Prepare yourself, lad. This will be a fight to remember. If you would have asked me that yesterday, I'd have said no. But now I think our chances have improved. Look, call me crazy if you like, but I trust Carlia. I don't think she'd lead us down a suicidal path. Besides, I'd rather die with some of Mercer's blood on my blade than spend the rest of my life regretting that I ran the other way. Aye, and some of what Carlia said is starting to make sense. Mercer may have damaged our reputation and raided our coffers, but this goes well beyond even his twisted form of larceny. Old Delvin kept calling it a curse, and we all laughed at him. Looks like the joke's on us. Until next we meet, Lyle. Whenever you're ready, I will walk alongside you. Nightingale, you may consider this your home. You'll find that this place offers many things that will help you in your endeavors, as well as a wealth of information for you to learn. Once the skeleton key has been restored to the Twilight Sepulchre, I'll make this place my home as well. With the skeleton key missing from the Twilight Sepulchre, I'm afraid Mercer's seen to it that none of us can benefit from Nocturnal's gifts. You merely transacted the oath, signed the unwritten contract with Nocturnal. In order for us to receive our abilities, our end of the bargain, I'm afraid the key must be returned. If Nocturnal was truly displeased with me, with any of us, she wouldn't have answered my call. I have no doubt that we still hold her favor, and I believe it gives us enough of an edge to defeat Mercer Frey.
Bad time to get lost, friend. <laughs> On. I'm behind you. Need me to carry something? Tread softly.
something has been here. I hope we aren't too late. Brynjolf and I found them like that. Mercer's doing. We have to catch up to him before it's too late. We should tread carefully. I wouldn't be surprised if he's left behind a few surprises for us. Be careful. There's no telling what lurks within these walls. Keep as quiet as you can. The farmer may be blind, but they can still hear us. Mercer's been careful so far. I don't think he'd just leave those plans behind unless he had his reasons. For someone in possession of the skeleton key, stealing the eyes of the farmer would be child's play. No. He means to ambush us down here. I'm almost certain of it. The eyes would go a long way in helping get the guild back on its feet. The last seems to think old Mercer is pulling a fast one on us, leading us here and letting the Dwarven constructs wear us down. I've learned to trust her lead at this point. After all, we Nightingales need to stick together, eh? A few years before Mercer murdered Gallus, the guild took in a thief who specialized in Dwarven antiquities. The thief had broken into a nobleman's home somewhere in Windhelm, made off with a small figurine of a snow elf with crystalline eyes. Aye, that's what the Falmer were known as long ago, before they became the blind monstrosities they are today. When Gallus took one look at the statue, 
He knew it was something special. He took it right up to Enther at the College of Winterhold. Didn't take long for Enther to find a book in the College's library that told of Urkenthat and a great statue with gemmed eyes within. Not just ordinary gems. They are said to be flawlessly cut and as big as a man's head. Can you imagine how much they're worth? Gallus and Mercer spent the better part of a month infiltrating Urkenthat, but the dwarves had protected the place far too well. There were just too many obstacles blocking the way. The plans were shelved, and the rest is history. Until next we meet, lad. Dawn, go ahead. What is it? What do you want? Do you need anything else? Ours need me to carry something? Lead, I'll follow. Ours need me to carry something. May the hiss guide us. Lead on, I'm behind you. Need me to carry something? What's that? It's Marsa. Look, down there. I'm on it, lass. Damn it. There's no way through. He's toying with us. He wants us to fall. What? Mercer's here. I can feel it. Look at the size of this place. Have you ever seen anything like it in your life, lass? Can't say that I have. Imagine the riches hidden <laughs>
Be careful. There's no telling what lurks within these walls. Sure as bones. Look at that monstrosity. It's a dwarven centurion. Very tough and very deadly. We can take the beast on or sneak around. It's your call, lad. We're right behind you. What was that? Keep as quiet as you can. The Lead on. May be blind, Need me to carry something? Hear us. Let's tread softly. This place reeks of fowler. This must be their hive. We'll have to keep silent if we want to avoid drawing their attention.
And he hasn't seen us yet. Bernio, watch the door. I lost. Nothing's getting by me. Climb down that ledge. See if you can... Carlia, when will you learn you can't get the drop on me? I could feel a sudden shift in the wind. And at that moment, I knew it would end with one of us at the end of a blade. What's Carlyle been filling your head with? Tales of thieves with honor? Oaths ripe with falsehoods and broken promises? Nocturnal doesn't care about you, the key, or anything having to do with the guild. Revenge, is it? Have you learned nothing from your time with us? When will you open your eyes and realize how little my actions differ from yours? Both of us lie, cheat, and steal to further our own end. It's clear you'll never see the skeleton key as I do, as an instrument of limitless wealth. Instead, you've chosen to fall over your own foolish code. Then the die is cast, and once again, my blade will taste Nightingale blood! Carlyle, I'll deal with you after I rid myself of your irksome companions. In the meantime, perhaps you and Brynjolf should get better acquainted. What? What's happening? I can't stop myself! What? We've taken control of you! I'm sorry, Austin. I... I can't...
can't believe it's over. Twenty-five years in exile, and just like that, it's done. All that remains is to ensure the safe return of the Skeleton Key. I'm afraid it's not that simple. When the Skeleton Key was stolen from the Twilight Sepulchre, our access to the Inner Sanctum was removed. The only way to bring it back will be through the Pilgrim's Path. It wasn't created for the Nightingales. It was created to test those who wish to serve Nocturnal in other ways. As a consequence, I have no knowledge of what you'll be facing. Brynjolf is needed back at the Thieves' Guild to keep order while you're away. And I... I can't bear to face Nocturnal after my failure to protect the key. I'm afraid you'll have to face the end of your journey alone. Take this with you. I'm not certain if it will help within the walls of the Sepulchre, but I certainly don't need it as much as you. I've had this bow almost my entire life, and it's never let me down. I hope it brings you the same luck. I've been a Nightingale for a very long time. I sold my allegiance to Nocturnal in exchange for many profitable years of thieving. Falling in love with Gallus was wrong. It was a distraction that allowed the sepulchre to be desecrated, and it likely cost him his life. Until the key is returned, I will never set foot inside that place again. The conduit to Nocturnal's realm, the realm of Everglow, has been in Skyrim, well, longer than recorded history. The Twilight Sepulchre was constructed around it by man and myrrh in order to shield it from those who would exploit its power. It's through this conduit that we're given Nocturnal's greatest gift, our luck. What she gains in return is a complete mystery. Even though Nocturnal doesn't desire worship in the traditional sense, the Twilight Sepulchre propagated a small group of priests. Of course, they never come into direct contact with Nocturnal, but they insisted they had her favor. As part of their duties, the priests created all sorts of baseless rituals and ceremonies all on Nocturnal's behalf. These priests weren't a threat to the Skeleton Key, or the conduit to Nocturnal's realm, so they were tolerated. One of their ceremonies involved the Pilgrim's Path, a so-called test of worthiness. If a Pilgrim was able to complete the path, it was said that they would live forever in twilight. What that means is anyone's guess. Sorry, lad. I've got important things to do. We'll speak another time. Yes, fellow Nightingale. Lead on. Need me to carry something?
Long life to you, Thay. Hello, my love. Back from some adventure, I bet. Yes, my love? What do you need? We have a cozy little profit. Here, this is your share, love. Oh, a bit of this and a bit of that. Goodbye, my love. Yes, my love? What do you need? Hey, watch it! I don't recognize you, but I sense that you're one of us. Who are you? 
The last of the Nightingale Sentinels, I'm afraid. I've defended the Sepulcher alone for what seems like an eternity. We were betrayed by one of our own kind. In fact, I'm to blame for what's happened here. I was blinded. Blinded by dark treachery masquerading as friendship. Perhaps if I had been more vigilant, then Mercer Frey wouldn't have lured me to my fate and stolen the skeleton key. I haven't heard that name. In a long time. How do you know of me? The key! You have the skeleton key! I never thought I'd see it again. And Mercer Frey? Then, it's over. And my death wasn't in vain. I owe you a great deal, Nightingale. You've done the Guild a great deal, and although they may not show it, I'm certain they appreciate your sacrifices. My only regret is that you had to undertake this task alone. Carlyle? She's still alive? I feared she'd befallen the same fate, ending up a victim of Mercer's betrayal. Nothing would bring me more pride than to return the key, but I'm afraid it's impossible. From the moment I arrived here, I felt myself, well, dying. The sepulchre isn't merely a temple or a vault to house the key. Within these walls is the Ebonair, a conduit to Nocturnal's realm of Everblow. When Mercer stole the key, that conduit closed, severely limiting our ties to her. I'm afraid so. I'm weakening, and I can feel myself slipping away. The years without restoration of my power have taken their toll. Whatever damage has been caused can only be corrected by following the Pilgrim's path to the Ebonair and replacing the key. The Ebonir is a conduit through which nocturnal influences our world. Not through magic or blessings, but purely through luck. Yes, absolutely. Your skill is your own. Don't let anyone ever tell you otherwise. But nocturnal, she influences our luck. Nearly imperceptible assistance we get when we ply our trade. Think about the guild. About the state it was in when you began. Think about all the little things you might have heard. A pick breaking when it shouldn't have. The clouds in the nighttime sky clearing at the wrong moment. Our access to those bits of luck are what separates us from common bandits. Precisely. There are a few who still call Nocturnal Lady Luck, and for good reason. With the Ebonmere closed, and their sudden severance from the realm of Everglow, I fear they've undergone a drastic change. They're shadows of their former selves. They no longer remember their true purpose or their original identities. My spirit didn't manifest itself in the sepulchre immediately. So, fortunately, I wasn't present when the Ebon Mirror was sealed. However, ever since that day, I've felt my power waning, slowly draining away. 
Whatever is affecting the Nightingale Sentinels is starting to affect me, too. As I get closer to the Ebonmere, I begin to feel myself slipping away. Even right this moment, I feel strange, when I don't think I should be feeling anything at all. I wish I could help you, but I've been a prisoner in this very chamber for the last quarter century. The only possible help I've come across are the remains of some poor fellow who is trying to follow in your footsteps. Perhaps his journal can help?
comes for you now. do we have here? It's been a number of years since I've set foot on your world, or perhaps it's been moments one tends to lose track. So, once again, the key has been stolen, and a champion returns it to the Sepulchre. Now that the Ebonmere has been restored, you stand before me awaiting your accolades. A pat on your head, a kiss on your cheek. What you fail to realize is your actions were expected and represent nothing more than the fulfillment of your agreement. Don't mistake my tone for displeasure. After all, you've obediently performed your duties to the letter. 
But we both know this has little to do with honor and oaths and loyalty. It's about the reward, the prize. Fear not. You'll have your trinkets, your desire for power, your hunger for wealth. I bid you to drink deeply from the Ebonmere mortal, for this is where the agent of Nocturnal is born. The oath has been struck, the die has been cast, and your fate awaits you in the Everglow. Farewell, Mighty Boy. See to it that you stay this time, won't you? Nocturnal seemed quite pleased with your efforts. I wouldn't take that to heart. It's her way. Think of her as a scolding mother continually pushing you harder to be successful, outwardly sounding angry, but silently content. I assure you, had she been displeased with you, we wouldn't be having this conversation. The circles at the base of the Ebonmere imbue you with powers befitting a Nightingale Agent. The Crescent Moon represents the Agent of Stealth, the Half Moon for the Agent of Subterfuge, and the Full Moon for the Agent of Strife. This is Nocturnal's way of maintaining balance. If you ever feel the need to change your abilities, you can return to the Sepulchre and step onto a different circle. Be warned that once you've chosen, you can't reselect for at least a day. Now, your life as a Nightingale begins. Should the need arise, you'll be summoned to the Sepulchre in order to defend it. The Guild has welcomed me back with open arms. I feel like a void in my life has finally been filled. I only hope that this isn't an ending to things, but actually the beginning. Why, perhaps the greatest crime spree Skyrim's ever known. There are pockets brimming with coin, and coffers overflowing with riches ripe for the picking. We may be nightingales, but in our hearts we're still thieves, and we're damn good at what we do. The agent of subterfuge utilizes shadow to cloud the judgment of those around him. By weaving the darkness to their will, this agent can manipulate others into fighting for the Nightingale for a limited time. The Agent of Strife can send forth a tendril of pure darkness into the heart of another, causing great injury to them. At the same time, this tether will bolster the agent's own life force, making him stronger. The Agent of Stealth is the master of remaining unseen. They are able to manipulate the darkness and use it to their advantage. On moonlit nights or in darkened rooms, this agent literally becomes invisible. Choose your path, and your journey will be complete. see you again. I was afraid you'd become like the others. If it were not for the actions of this Nightingale, your fears would have come true. He honors us all. What will you do now, my love? Nocturnal calls me to the Everglow. My contract has been fulfilled. Will I ever see you again? When your debt to Nocturnal has been paid, We'll embrace once again. Farewell, Gallus. Eyes open. 
Walk with the shadows. Goodbye, Carlisle. Yes, Nightingale? What is it? Gallus's oath has been paid. His actions have satisfied the terms. Now his spirit becomes one with the Everglow, the realm of perpetual twilight and the cradle of shadow. No, not gone. He's become one with the shadows. This is the greatest honor a Nightingale can possibly achieve. In death, he's become a part of that which we use to live. Absolutely. When we say, walk with the shadows, we are asking those nightingales who have passed on to protect us. It's believed that they are literally what guides our uncanny luck, by placing their hands in ours. That's why the Ebonmere needed to be reopened. Without it, there's no way Nocturnal was able to allow them through. If this place is in danger ever again, the shadows will call. Should the need arise, a portal connects the Sepulchre and Nightingale Hall. Use it whenever you wish. I've decided to make my home at Nightingale Hall. Since it's your home as well, I hope to see you and Brynjolf there. Of course, I may visit some of Skyrim cities to acquire things from time to time. Can't afford to get rusty now, can we? Farewell. Eyes open, and walk with the shadows. Vivian and back, as they say. May the hist guide us.
to oblivion and back, as they say. Need me to carry something? Let's tread softly. So, you can cast a few spells. Am I supposed to be impressed? Interest you in some marksman training. Hey, good to see you. What's going on? Hmm. It's good to see you in one piece, lot. Hmm. It's good to see you in one piece, lot. I just wanted to give you a proper thank you for everything you've done. The guild is back on its feet again and on its way to a prosperous future. What's become of the skeleton key? That's it then. After all those years of helplessly watching the guild decline. But enough of that. I'm confident that with you in charge, we'll soon have more gold than we could possibly spend. I'll be down here, trying to coordinate everything with Delvin and Vex, to make sure the coin keeps flowing, and no one skims. If you still feel like doing some jobs, I'm sure Delvin and Vex have more than their fair share to give out. Either way, it's been a pleasure, my friend. Here's to the future of the Guild. May it last another thousand years. Things are looking up around here, lad. Take a good look around you. Have you ever seen the guild in such a prosperous state? With Mercer Frey gone, and our influence spreading across Skyrim, the guild's earned a new level of respect it hasn't seen in decades. I couldn't be more proud to be part of the Thieves' Guild, or of its new guildmaster. Now go and make us some coin, lad. Looking for work. Still have quite a good bit of jobs available, if you're looking for some extra coin. Well, well. I was looking for this little beauty. If you happen to cross any other unusual trinkets like this, be sure to bring them to me. By the eight, you actually got your hands on it. This alone is worth more than some thieves earn in a lifetime. There's plenty more work for the likes of you. So, feeling loose? How about you run a job for me? If you're looking for extra work, talk to Vex or Delvin. They'll fix you up. Oh, it's out. one thing to say you've got the skills to be a thief. Thanks. I haven't seen so much celebrating in years. Mercer is dead. We have a new guildmaster. Things are finally looking up. I only hope we can restore the guild to its former glory. After all the damage that's been done. Aye. 
So, feeling loose? How about you run a job for me? Even if you're one of us, you better not, not make trouble. I don't care if you're best buddies with the Guildmaster. I'll still smash in your skull if you try anything. Back from a job, huh? Hope it went well. Better hope this one isn't another waste of yeah. Things are looking up around here, lad. Got lots of jobs available. Interested? I had all the fishing, numbers, and bedlam jobs. The ones with a more personal touch. If breakings are more your thing, go talk to Vex.
Most of the establishments in Skyrim keep their transactions recorded within business ledgers. Your job will be to change the numbers in those books so the shortfalls from our other jobs look legit. Feel like doing a bit of writing? Nice. Yeah, this is what you'll need to know. Pull up a seat. Have a drink. Couldn't have done it better myself. Here's your coin. Bloody good timing. Just got some more clients. These marks keep their ledgers all neat and nice. Yeah, this is what you'll need to know. I have work. So, what can I do for you today? I can pat you on the back all day, but coin's coin, right? Well, it appears your actions are starting to make waves out there. People are talking about the guild again. In fact, I just got a special job request in. I haven't gotten anything like that in years. I need you to make your way to Solitude and talk to Erica. He's looking to run some kind of a shield job. Now, he's not exactly going to welcome you with open arms, but keep you cool. Do this job right, and we've just made an important friend out there. Where are you off to? There's work to be done. Riling's obsession with honor and tradition is quaint, but politically irrelevant. About time you got here. I'm not accustomed to dealing with people who are unreliable. That's why I asked Delvin to send me his best. Huh, that remains to be seen. Nothing raises my ire more than having an agreement broken. It's bad for business, and it wastes time. Captain Volf of the Dainty Slode has decided to test my patience on this matter by neglecting to honor a trade agreement we had established. I need you to help me show him the error of his ways by sneaking on board the Slode and planting some contraband. You'll need to get your hands on some Belmora Blue from Sabine Niet down by the docks. She's the first mate on another ship, the Red Wave. Once you get your hands on it, I want you to plant it in Captain Bolf's footlocker. I'll take care of the rest. Captain Volf is ashore right now, and I want the authorities waiting for him when he gets back. Now get going. I don't want to see your face until the job's done. Not sure. I know that it starts with moon sugar, but all sorts of other ingredients are added to increase its potency. Used to be a lucrative underworld commodity when Balmora was still standing. Now the stuff is beyond valuable. It's also very illegal. Anyone caught with Balmora Blue looks forward to rotting in jail for a very long time. There's pirates. And then there's the crew of the Red Wave. They're in a class by themselves. They usually make runs along the coast, shipping all sorts of contraband to and from Morrowind. Rumor has it they can get you anything for the right price. I must return to the court. They simply can't make do without me.
I once captained a ship called the Argent Raptor. She struck an iceberg and went down. You reek! A little friendly advice. Take a bath and get some new clothes. Well then, you're talking to the right person. I'm the only one left in Tamriel that can get my hands on it. It's damn near impossible to find anymore. You want to buy it off of me? I'm afraid not. How else can a poor, overworked sailor like myself expect to earn a living? I'm sorry you feel my illegal contraband is overpriced. Perhaps you should bring it up at the next Merchant Guild meeting. Look, you want it, I got it. You know the price, so talk to me when you want to cough up the gold. Whatever you're about to say, don't bother.
Did you hear something? Over here! Smear, you won't be alive! Are you ready? Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! This is not wrong. Yeah. 
The Imperials are good for business, and business is good for Skyrim. Yes, I know. In fact, by now, Captain Volf should be on his way to the prisons. Our contract is complete. Here's a token of my gratitude for your efforts. Oh, convey my compliments to Delvin for me. Tell him I'll be happy to reopen whatever doors he needs in solitude. I must return to the court. They simply can't ma- Be careful! It's one thing to say you've got this. Hey, watch it! Look, need some gold. I may have some work for you. Erica assures me that Captain Wolf will spend pretty much the rest of his life clapped in irons. Best of all, he's also pledged to open doors for us in solitude and to get things rolling again. I think you'll find that the guild is beginning to grow. We've had a merchant move into the space right outside the flagon. It's nice to shake off the cobwebs and get things rolling again. Keep this up, and I can see a bounty headed our way. Good. My clients are getting impatient. We want to waylay a shipment on the way from this business without them even noticing anything went missing. Want the job? Just remember the rules. Keep it clean, and keep it quiet. Here's the details. It's been a long time since anyone joined us. Seems like people are in a rush to leave. Be oh. careful! So, what can I do for you today? Oh, you're back. Couldn't have done it better myself. Here's your coin. I got another special request, and I specifically asked for you. You're making a name for yourself, that's for sure. But more important, you're making a name for the guild. Keep it up. Got word from Charleston Cruelty in Windell that a rival guild is trying to get itself started. Not only that, but they're giving us thieves a bad name by murdering their marks. Get over there and see what you can do. Find me if you're ever looking for some extra coin. Holyfrost farm outside the city. It's honest work, if a bit dull. The cruel seas have been sailors for generations. In truth, I regret not following in the footsteps of my ancestors. My daughter Fiotli. She was murdered a few months ago. Left her laying on the ground in the pool of her own blood. I assumed they were after her valuables. She always wore far too much jewelry in public. Then I told her it'd be the death of her. I never thought. No need to explain. I'm well aware of your guild's methods. It took me weeks, but I finally tracked down to kill her. A bloody Altmer at that. Can you imagine? Let's just say I'm a firm believer in an eye for an eye and leave it at that. He fancied himself a thief in some sort of new guild forming around here. Gave me some valuable information before. Well, you know. Well, like I told Delvin, I think we can help each other. You recover what I'm looking for, and take out a rival guild in the process. Exactly. One of the pieces stolen from her was a silver locket. A cruel sea family heirloom. I want it back. 
The only name I have is Naranya. Has a house right here in Windhelm. That's where you should begin looking. Should have been an adventurer like you instead of a farmer. Yes, can I help you with something? Fiotle. Fiotle. Where have I heard that name? Oh, of course, the poor girl who was murdered. Such a beautiful young thing. A tragedy, to be certain. How dare you! You're accusing me of taking part in such a, such a heinous act? I should have you arrested for even suggesting such a thing. I'm afraid I have absolutely no idea what you're speaking of. Now, just a moment. Let's think about this, you know, discuss it like two rational people. Look, I had no choice. They're crazy. I could be killed. It's a guild of Ultima thieves. They call themselves the Somerset Shadows. Their leader, Linway, He's the worst of the lot. He steals valuables from the dead. No, Linwe prefers stealing from the deceased. Digs up the corpses, breaks into the hall of the dead. He even stole that locket right off that poor murdered girl's body. Or what was left of it. I used to fence for the Thieves' Guild in Skyrim a long time ago. When Linue moved into the area, he contacted me and said if I didn't fence for them, he'd kill me. If I tell you, you need to promise not to kill me. I'd prove to be quite an asset to the Thieves' Guild. I'm one of the best fences in Skyrim. <sighs> Linue is holed up in a place called Uttering Hills Cave. He's got his entire guild there, so be careful. After you're done with all this, come back any time and I'll, I'll make good on my end of the bargain. I don't know. Rumor has it she was murdered, butchered by a madman. <laughs> I really try and stay out of such things. Torsten might think Linway or myself are responsible for Fjordli's death, but I can assure you nothing could be further from the truth. It was difficult at first. The Nords of this city are at best suspicious of outsiders. But in time, I made the right friends and proved myself useful enough that they don't give me trouble anymore. The Dark Elves are too proud and naive to understand the way things truly are, and so they continue to dwell in that slum. Just got here from the Somerset Isles. Lots of opportunity in Skyrim. I'm sorry I misled you. Return when this is over, and we'll talk about my involvement in the Thieves Guild.
Frost farm outside the city. It's honest work, if a bit dull. It pains me to see this locket. To be reminded of Fiotli once more, but I'm glad it's back where it belongs. 
Tell Delvin that if he still desires to have my support for the Thieves Guild in Windhelm, he's got it. Should have been an adventurer like you instead of a farmer. The cruel seas have been sailors for generations. In truth, I regret not following in the footsteps of my If I make enough money from the farm, I must have a long ship to sail the river. So you've come to see me to sell or to buy, hmm? I've been setting up some open trading with Tunilia back at the guild in Riften, and it's proven to be quite profitable. There's been no word from the remnants of the Somerset Shadows, so I'm assuming you either eliminated all of them, or they've fled Skyrim. Everything seems to be working out nicely, wouldn't you agree? Hurry back, and bring more merchandise. You'll have quite a good bit of jobs available, if you're looking for some extra coin. Torsten was gratified the death of his daughter was avenged, and the heirloom was returned. At this very moment, he's laying the groundwork for the guild to re-establish itself in Windhelm. Burning that banner was a nice touch too. Should send a clear message to the Somerset Shadows that we're a force to be reckoned with. We're still growing by leaps and bounds thanks to you and other merchants moved into the space outside the flagon. You're a natural. Never seen anything like it. We got a long way to go, but don't let that bother you. It's a lot farther than we've been in years. The only way this guild's gonna continue to grow is by taking extra work. Something troubling you? Yeah? I'll listen. And here's the spoils. Plenty more where this came from. I don't know what you're made of, but I've never seen anyone tackle this many jobs without ending up dead or in jail. We got half of Skyrim back under our wing, and the coins start in the flow. Now, if you're ready, I've got another special job for you. We actually got a request from one of the most powerful families in Whiterun. The Battle Balls. Make your way up there and look for Alfred. He says he's got a matter that requires a delicate touch, and I suggested you for the job. Don't make me the fool and let me down, all right? Could I give you a little tip? Take every job you can, or else you'll end up. Friend, patron of the great clan Battleborn, a name I'm sure you know well. You're here, and not a moment too soon. If anything should happen to Arn, there'll be hell to pay. A 
close friend of mine. We fought together on the battlefield for many years until old age got the better of us. Now it's up to me to save him one more time. This time, from the Executioner's Block in Solitude. The city guard in Solitude is seeking on for a serious crime. When he fled here, he was arrested for drunken behavior. Can you imagine? Fortunately, his identity isn't known to the authorities in Whiterun, so there's still a chance to save him. Hold a moment. This is more than a simple prison break. I want to have Arn's name stricken from the record books permanently. I'm setting him up with a new identity. It's the only way to throw the guard permanently off his trail. The job is twofold. First, steal a letter that was sent from Solitude warning White Run's guard to be on the lookout for Arn. The second is to change Arn's name in the prison registry to his new identity. If it was easy, I would have hired a local thug instead of a professional. You see, both of these items are kept inside Dragon's Reach. And they don't allow visitors inside the Jarls or the Steward's Chambers. One more thing. If you get caught, I can't afford to be connected to you. Remember that before you do anything stupid. I have eyes within Dragon's Reach. They tell me that all correspondence from other holes are sent to the Jarl's private chambers. It's a well-known fact that the steward keeps all of the records on White Run's prisoners in a large book. My sources tell me you can find that book in a study in his quarters. Change Arn's entry in the book to anything you want, and they'll be forced to let him go after he serves a few weeks. You watch yourself out there. May the gods watch over your battles, friend. All this standing around is rubbish. We should be taken to fight for the storm. Alfred, patron of the great clan Battleborn. Arn? Never heard of him. <laughs> I guess that means you're finished. Here's your payment. Tell Delvin that he has my support and all the weight it carries in Whiterun from now on. I think he'll be quite pleased. You watch yourself out there. Oh, look, little baby battleborn. 
out of here, Papa? Just go away. Got lots of jobs available. Interested? Alfred sent ahead his compliments. Looks like his friend Arn is soon to be released, thanks to his brand new identity. More importantly, he's pledged the full support of the Battleborn clan to the Thieves' Guild. Success means the Guild is getting stronger. We've picked up another merchant and a new recruit. Being a thief is like a second skin for you, ain't it? Never seen anything like it. If you don't watch out, you might even earn Vex's respect. That'd be something, eh? The only way this guild's gonna continue to grow is by taking extra work. Oh, you're back. This kind of work suits you, but it's gonna end up making you rich. Well, I never thought I'd see the guild this way ever again. The place is growing into what it used to be when Gallus was running the show. Contacts are springing up all over, and I've got young footpads beating down the door to join up. I got one last special request of you. Finish this one, and all of Skyrim's ours for the taking. I want you to head out to Markov and speak to Endon. He's a silversmith. He has some kind of shop there. His father was a good friend of the guild back in the day, but we could really use his family's influence back on our side. Hey, this guild needs the coin. Walking away without taking work is not gonna make you popular around here. Smith one day, the like my mother and father. has plenty of strong drink and clean rooms. Frobby, our customer needs a drink. I work silver, like my father, so and his father before him. Oh, thank goodness. I wasn't sure where else to turn. Several months ago, I ordered a special silver mold from some artisans in Valenwood by way of a Khajiit caravan. Well, it never arrived. Later, I found out that it was robbed by a group of bandits led by someone named Regal Strongarm. Look, I talked to the Jarl, the steward, the house car, everyone. They all told me their resources were spread too thin right now. Word on the street says that the Thieves' Guild is coming back into its own in Markarth. So I figured... Exactly. Look, this mold is irreplaceable. I'll pay you well for its return, and I can also prove to be quite a valuable ally to the Thieves' Guild. Yes, indeed. The only thing I can tell you is that the mold was taken to the bandits' hideout, a small cottage called Pine Lodge. I'm not sure how many men they have inside, but I trust that won't be an issue for you. Good luck. You want a drink? I should remind Clepper to clean this place up. My wife Kira runs our jewelry stall in the market. My daughter Adara is also my apprentice. She's a quick study.
Maik's father was also called Maik, as was Maik's father's father. At least, that is what his father said. Maik is tired now. Go bother somebody else. On. I'll keep watch from here. Yes? Need something? What do you need? Endon's mold. I'm afraid you have the wrong place, my friend. You'll find no silversmiths here. I assure you, I have nothing of value. I'm nothing but a poor woodcutter just trying to make ends meet. Well, uh, Endon is a silversmith in Markarth, so I just assumed. So that's how it's going to be, huh? Fine. Take your best shot. Never should have come here. Inside you. in this little game.
time to end this little game.
Come on in. The Silverblood Inn has plenty of strong drink and clean rooms. Frobby, our customer needs a drink. I work silver, like my father, and his father before him. You've more than proven that the Thieves' Guild is back on its feet in our city, and earned every bit of your reward. Tell Delvin that he can count on me to provide the influence around here with the right people when he needs it. If you're ever looking to sell any illegally obtained merchandise, I'd also provide my services as a fence. It's the least I can do. Uh, right. Maybe just one of the popular songs like... Business is absolutely booming, my friend. I've taken to hiring a few extra men of my own just to keep up with all the shipments. Old Delvin certainly takes care of his own, doesn't he? I've got coin and I've got merchandise. Let's see what we can do. Poor woman. She was just visiting the city from Cyrodiil. When you, you want get back a drink? to Rifton, tell Delvin I should new remind Cuthbert to clean this place up. And a noble, a perfect forsworn target. Lead on. Need me to carry something? Lead, I'll follow. I think it's time we make this guildmaster thing official. Go and talk to Brynjolf. He's making preparations. I heard Brynjolf is looking for you. I think it's time for the guild to have a new leader. Well, my friend, the time's come to make it official. It's time to become our guildmaster. Don't worry. I promise this will be short and sweet. If you'll just meet us in the center of this cistern room, we can begin. I've never been good at these things, so I'm just going to keep it short. Being Guildmaster means more than just getting a cut of all the loot. It's about being a leader and keeping this rabble in order. With that in mind, I propose that the position of Guildmaster should be yours. Delvin? Agreed. Thanks. 
Sure, why not? Carlia. Absolutely. Everyone is in agreement. So all I can do now is name you Guildmaster. I wish you good fortune and long life. Now everyone, get back to work. Shut you need anything, anything at all, don't hesitate to ask. Well, that's it. Sorry if it isn't the ceremony you were hoping for. But we're not exactly known for throwing our coin around. After we're done, head over to Tenelia. She'll set you up with your guild master armor. Oh, and one last thing. Here, I want you to take this. It's sort of a tradition around here. So, Sapphire. You need anything. Anything at all. Don't hesitate to ask. Now go and make us some coin. So now the pupil is the master, eh? Good show. I hear Endon's quite pleased to have his merchandise back. He's a powerful ally in Markov. Should help the Guild regain a foothold in the West. The Guild's at full strength, and we have you to thank for it. We've had our share of dark times, and now they seem like a distant memory. I'm gonna tell you something you'll never hear me say again. But if you tell anyone I told you, I'll deny it. When you walk through the guild, don't be ashamed to hold your head high, because you're the best damn thief in the place. There's plenty more work for the likes of you. You need... If you need anything, anything at all, don't hesitate to ask. I suppose you deserve it. Couldn't do any worse than Mercer, anyway. Before we get down to business, I've got something I need you to do. Well, as you know, the guild's growing and things are looking up around here. The only thing we're lacking is a reliable way to transport our merchandise across Skyrim. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but there are several Khajiit caravans that travel across the realm. They're shrewd traders and don't mind getting their hands dirty. I've bartered with their leader, Rasad, on more than one occasion. Actually, I want you to bring him something. You see, the caravans are notorious for transporting illegal substances. Present Rasad with the satchel of moon sugar, and I bet my last septum he'll make a deal. It's an illegal substance highly favored by the Khajiit. Very difficult to come by. If moon sugar is refined properly, it can be used to make skooma, another substance that will knock you over after a single draft. Rasad is the head of a small syndicate of independent merchant families. Each caravan is obliged to pay dues, but in return, a small portion of the profits are shared between them and the leader parcels out the routes. If we could make contact with them, they could provide an excellent way to inconspicuously transport goods for us. Yes, and I'm more than happy to give it to you. I mean, look at this place. I've never seen so much wealth down here. You've made us all rich. Here you go. Should fit you like a glove, boss. You'll find Rasad with his caravan group. Just don't do anything stupid when you get there. Standing over it. 
Now get out of my way. Our guildmaster graces me with a visit. What can I do for you? Yes, Lion. Did you need something? Take a good look around you. Have you ever seen the guild in such a prosperous state? With Mercer Frey gone and our influence present in all of Skyrim's cities, the guild's accumulating wealth faster than we can spend it. I couldn't be more proud to be part of the Thieves' Guild, or of its new guildmaster. It's as if the merchandise and coin is simply falling from the sky. Vex and Delvin are having to turn clients away at this point. It's almost impossible to keep up. Don't forget to check your tribute chest once in a while. As Guildmaster, you're getting a significant cut of the spoils. Eyes open, and walk with the shadows. Approach as if you know us, stranger. Who are you, and what do you want? Yes, I've heard the guild is rising back to power. An alliance would be most beneficial to both parties. I will consider the offer, but I'll have to discuss it with the other caravans. Ah, moon sugar. I could smell it on you. I am pleased with this offer, and accept. Take my word to the leaders of your guild, and tell them we look forward to a prosperous and profitable future. If you happen upon any of our caravans in your travels, we'd also be more than willing to pay you a fair sum for any of your stolen goods. Take a look. Give my regards to Tonilia. Tell her I'll contact her soon. What do you want? You've caused enough trouble. <laughs> oh, I don't know. You don't look so impressive to me. I mean, you're no Grey Fox, 
but you must be doing something right. Morrowind, of course. Any Dunmer worth their weight in ash would tell you the same. I used to be a member of the Morag Tong. We were an assassin's guild that was sanctioned by the Empire to provide public, as well as private, executions. We did this in the name of Mephala, whom I used to quite fervently worship. No. In fact, the Tong were quite the bitter rivals with the Dark Brotherhood. Where they operate within the shadows, we operated on the side of justice. I didn't have a choice. When the Red Mountain erupted in Morrowind, the Tong fled, spread to the Nine Winds. We made a pact that one day, we might reunite. But I believe that day is long in coming. Have you taken leave of your senses? If the Dark Brotherhood discovered I had been with the Morag Tong, they would have come after me with a vengeance. Better to stay out of sight and ply me trade with the Thieves' Guild, than risk a contract on me head. Or should hope so. The Dark Brotherhood is also known to place contracts on those who associate with the Morag Tong as well. So, unless you wish a visit from one of their own, I'd suggest you follow your own advice and keep your mouth shut. Don't hurry back, I won't be waiting. You've been doing a few jobs for Vex. How about... We haven't met. Name's Garther. Remember it, because you're gonna hear a lot about me. It's kind of an amusing tale. I was making my way down the road from Iverstead towards Riften, and I saw Vex fighting off a couple of wolves. Well, there were eight of them, and she'd already killed three by the time I joined the fight. Together, we made sure work of them, and the last one limped away licking its wounds. Actually, that's when she politely asked me to hand over my coin purse. Can you imagine? <laughs> we scuffled for a while, broke each other's weapons, and finally fell to the ground exhausted. Indeed. After a few minutes, she looked me dead in the eye and asked me if I wanted to join the guild. Just like that. No apologies. Something told me I wouldn't regret it. I had heard the guild was back on its feet again, and most of Skyrim under its belt. I'll tell you, I wouldn't want to cross blades with Vex again, but I certainly wouldn't mind a bit of a scuffle. Good luck on your next job. Want to talk? Go ahead. Hey, what do you need? Keep to the shadow. Sure, we can talk. This should be good. Yeah, I guess I have a minute. What do you want? Been doing a few jobs for If you need big pocket training, you? just let me know. Always a pleasure, boss. What could I do for you? If you're looking for extra work, talk to Vex or Delvin. They'll fix you up. Stick to the rules and you'll end up rich. Break them, and you're out on your arse. Simple, right? Yeah, good. I'll contact some of my people and have them prepare some shipments right away. Good job. Here, let me give you something for all the legwork. Until next time. Good to see you lot. Thanks. Always a pleasure, boss. What could I do for you? Things are looking up around here, lad. Now go and make us a point, lad. Be glad to repair any damage to your guild armor. Until next time. So, name your poison. <laughs> They don't call me the Emperor Master for nothing. What do you need?
my brother in crime. What do you need? Now that the Empire has arrived in Riften, we finally established a launching point into Morrowind, just in case.